Okay. Welcome, everybody. Welcome springtime. Welcome to May. Yeah, welcome to May. So I'll call the meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Um, Tom uh, Ayer will not be able to uh, be here today. I did get a chance to talk to him about, you know, what's on the agenda. And um, he didn't have any specific items that he was really strongly concerned about or any decisions we might make. Um, he, he did talk a bit about the um, subdivision regulations, um, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. So I'll uh, bring up his opinion on that. Um, so the first item is additions, deletions, and changes to the agenda. I don't think there are. We do have at the end of the meeting, uh, we will go into, uh, potentially go into executive session. Um, we may make a decision, and so we'd come out of executive session to make that decision. But uh, we probably will stop the um, broadcast to go into executive session. That's the last item on the agenda. Um, and public comments? None to be had. Um, As always, thank you for your work. <laughs> oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the first item on the agenda is really a review. Pat Mayner's here, uh, Town Forest Committee Chair. Um, it is a a d discussion, really, an opportunity for any questions concerning the inventory and assessment of the Heinsberg Town Forest. Um, do you want to step up and um, and maybe just tell us how we got this assessment done? And I think it was a grant, but yeah. Um, it wasn't. It, we <laughs> oh. came up with all, all the oh, money. <laughs> okay. Um, when we did the management plan in 2012, one of the biggest items was an inventory and assessment of the forest so that we could have a forestry management plan, not a general management plan. And our general management plan has been held up as an example around the state as town forests are getting more popular. But um, we have had to with not be certified as a tree farm um, because we don't have a current management plan. and. We haven't been able to do any harvesting projects because we didn't have a current management plan. They should be reviewed every 10 years. Um, our then county forester, Keith Thompson, was going to do it, was going to do it, but county foresters' jobs changed um, in that they were told to spend the bulk of their time on common assessment, uh, not what's, what's the term? Um, and when the farmers can current, current use, current, current use, current, current use yeah. um, stuff, and that any actual forestry work in town forests would be a second or third or tenth priority. So Keith kept saying he would get to it, get to it, couldn't get to it. He got a different job. We were without a county forester for a while, so it just kind of getting got bumped down the road. Uh, we got a new county forester, Ethan Tapper, and he said. Realistically, I'm not going to get to it, but I can help you contract with someone. And he did. He was a huge help. Um, we put it out to bid. Um, we got three realistic bids. Um, we chose Harris Rowan of Long Meadow, and he did a fantastic job. So we asked him to inventory the trees, take a little bit of a look at wildlife. I mean, those are two very closely related issues. and. Um, take a quick look at the impact of recreation, but that was mostly beyond the scope of what we could pay for. Um, so we paid him to do it. He spent a lot of time last summer, and he gave us a very detailed, very thorough, very comprehensive report um, on what we have and recommendations for the next 10 years for harvesting projects. Uh, we had a public hearing that was, we probably had 30 people there. Um, and from that hearing, we got two suggestions for improvement which have been incorporated into this. One was to talk about how the plan addresses climate change, and one was to um, add some language protecting reptiles and amphibians in the course of um, any harvesting operations. So we've incorporated those. 
so we're coming to you for ask, asking you to approve it as an addendum to the 2012 management plan. So, I don't, so I, I'm open to questions. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so I just have one more question so yeah. that you are, you are clarifying it for me. So uh, for a minute, I thought you said we didn't have a management plan, but we have a management plan. And then, and then this is not called. This, this is, is we, we a decided tree to call management it an inventory plan. and assessment. With it, and the focus of that is managing the the forestry aspects of it, the the lumber, yes. essentially, as opposed to recreation, wildlife, water, right, everything. Okay. I mean, it, it addresses those things. There's overlap, but this is specifically geared toward the value of the trees mm -hmm. for, um, in terms of long, timber yes. lumber yes. So, right. so it's harvesting really, future har harvesting right. and yes. making and, it a real forest not yeah. just a yeah. recreational right. to woodland. Harris Rowan's credit he really addresses water quality and wildlife and those things and the the harvesting isn't just to earn money but also to improve the forest in the long haul in terms of all its resources and previously, that basically all we had ever had prior to the 2012 management plan was a timber harvesting plan that was basically worked out between when it was Mike Snyder was the county forester and the town forest committee to, um, you know, with the goal of, of sustainably sustainable harvests for the forest so it 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 um but moving forward with the new management plan it didn't seem appropriate to or it, it, the 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 goal of the overall comprehensive management since recreation starting in like 2007 had become <coughs> much more uh much more active part of the mm -hmm. use of the forest to develop this this uh basically timber management yeah. kind of plan. And our last timber management plan that had been completed was in 1986. So we yeah. were behind. They should be done every 10 years. Okay. Yeah. And the last time we harvested was the... Was the, the floor. floor. The floor, yeah. which was 10 years? 2007, I 2007, think. 2007, I, I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Mike Schneider had done some of a management plan, but he never had time to finish it, so... Yeah. Okay. And then... Keith never had time to build on that, so this is done. I mean, we're, we're really excited because this has been on our to-do list for a long time, and it's kind of held us up on things because mm -hmm. you really need to know what you've got. <laughs> yeah. And there's been a lot of, of natural disasters kind of or mm -hmm. occurrences, yeah. I yeah. guess, yeah. In, in that period of yeah. time. We did so. have some limited harvesting in 2011 after the December 2010 windstorm, basically salvage, <laughs> and that was mm -hmm. pretty limited, too. So, um, am I understanding correctly that the wildlife is just kind of an extra that was thrown in? Well, we wanted, we have some inventory of wildlife. We've had um, aquatic wildlife inventoried oh. by Arrowwood back before some trail building occurred. Um, and Audubon has done some things, but we hadn't this, been this all... This was mostly birds, just a bear yeah. and deer scout was the yeah. only mammals yeah. that were mentioned. Right. Um, I think it was partly to inform Harris and Harris to be informed in terms of talking about harvesting and the impact and what, you know, I think part of his philosophy, his goal in the harvesting is to improve wildlife habitat too. Um, yeah, but so. trees aren't habitat only for birds. No, but for all sorts of things. Yeah, but maybe birds are good indicators. No. I was just curious because I know Conservation Commission has talked a lot about mapping wildlife corridors, and I believe we've got a town map of wildlife corridors. Yeah. So, that, I that's... think Harris looked at that as oh. part of this. Yeah. Okay. He was I mean, I think... really thorough. I mean, he gathered documents from everywhere. And my other question was about you have some... Um, boundary issues. It looked yeah. like someplace maybe wasn't um, yeah. surveyed properly, yeah. which is interesting because that's a topic later in our meeting. Oh, okay. So do you have plans to solve that problem? We do. Um, we thought we'd wait till we had some money from harvesting <laughs> to uh -huh. be able to deal with that because we'll probably yeah. have to at least split the cost with um, the cars proper people. Right. And, and have it yeah. So And we don't have money for that, but we 
will have money. Yes. <laughs> so that's, mm -hmm. yes, we, we, that's on our to-do list. As long as you take the trees off of them. <laughs> Somewhere else. The right spot, yeah. the right side. Yeah. Right. Well, the early harvesting is um, around the plantations before mm -hmm. they blow down more. Yeah. It's very impressive. I, yeah. We were pretty wowed yeah. by what Harris did. Yeah. Um, he's been a delight to work with, and he's gone way above and beyond um, our expectations. And I mean, he came to our public forum, and he's rewritten <coughs> parts of it, and just over and over again gone above and beyond. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had sort of one question about, um, you know, conflicts between the recreation and the, the forestry piece of it. Um, and is there any issues with this actual plan that, you know, I think the select board should be aware of? You're looking for our approval mm -hmm. for the plan. You've done a pu public meeting. I don't think there's any specific s state statute that we have to do to to um, approve the plan. Um, but I'm sort of, that was one item I was sort of curious uh, about. I'm sure I, there's some conflict there. And I think when you're using, dealing with any resource with multiple uses, there's always a ton of potential for conflict. I think our strategy is going to be ahead of time before any trees are marked for um, coming down, mm -hmm. and certainly before the chainsaws yeah. whirl. Um, use it as a demonstration project, and Ethan will conduct a walk up there and show how this is going to be good for the forest and why it's good for the forest, and do lots of public outreach through the record and front porch forum and fellowship of the wheel and. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why this is good and why we're harvesting these trees now, you know, yeah. just do a lot of public education. And I suspect that when the trees start coming down, people will be complaining. Well, that was my favorite tree and it's ruining mm -hmm. this trail. But I think we'll just have to you try to explain to them yep. that this is for the benefit it's of the forest. It's a management plan. It's, yes, it's not willy-nilly, and it's not just to earn money. Um, there's improved the diversity of the forest, improve the resiliency of the forest. Um, I think okay. the MOU with Fellowship of the Wheel also specifies that the town is intending to do that mm -hmm. and that they are, they yeah. need to accommodate yeah. Yeah. the I, I, forestry fellow, practices. Fellowship is aware. I, I would been, yeah. um, Fellowship is with us on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I would think they are. Um, and there was a, a little bit of discussion about, um, uh, you know, uh, trail conditions and, and were there any specific findings that the recreation was impacting the forest in a significant way? No. Um, Harris was really quite positive about the trails, even though it was pretty wet last year. Um, I thought he seemed quite positive. We do have our part of this recreation study that the state is doing, and we just got their preliminary report, and we need that. And our burning question is how much recreation is too much? That's the, mm -hmm. the question we're asking. Um, the, and I haven't, I just, just got the email, and I haven't sent it out to the other members of the committee, but I hope to do that this evening. Um, they, the, Rough, rough, rough draft has not addressed that question very well. So we are supposed to edit and give them feedback, and we'll see see where that goes. Um, but um, Harris was pretty content with All right. what was going on there. He, I think he mentioned one trail, and Fellowship has since improved it. Mm -hmm. So this is a draft, and the only reason you're calling it a draft is because you haven't improved. We it. haven't improved it. <laughs> Feeling kind of important. Um, <laughs> And so, I guess just comments on where, what you're thinking, you know, what we're thinking, and then we can decide whether we actually vote on it tonight, or we like to sort of, you know, say this is what we're looking at and give others an opportunity mm -hmm. to weigh in. But Andrea, your thoughts yeah, I on mean, it? I think that's the appropriate um, process to follow. It's a document, uh, it could be available on the website so people can look at I it. I think it is. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> and then. Um, and then we could vote on it next meeting mm -hmm. or get take comment. I did have a couple uh, or one edit, oh, or which wasn't that? sure. It's in the it's on the page where there's the picture in the middle. It's 
uh, page 14. <laughs> okay. And, and it, I don't know whether it's other regen, whether it's species or whether it's supposed to okay. be regeneration. I'll take a look. And, and just the way that it, the, it's formatted with the picture and the little mm -hmm. bit of words makes it okay. hard to read. I'll take a look. There has yeah. been one mm -hmm. more recent draft than the one you were okay. given, so I'll check and okay. see if that's fixed. Yeah. If it's not, it's about page 14, I'll take a look. Yeah. Okay. Um, because um, Harris noticed some Looks things like and the, did, the writing, yeah. the sentence goes across from it one does. side of the picture yeah. to the other, so regeneration is starting a sentence. When so. we added in the um, information about climate change and the, I think that was might have been around page eight. Oh, I some see. Things got screwed up a little bit. And there and it is. It around. Yeah, yeah, and then Harris yeah, fixed yeah. it, but that had been so recently I haven't given you that. So I'll check. If not, we'll fix it. And then we could get yeah, the latest copy I'll send that to prior you. to the meeting. Yeah. Should I send it to you? Or uh, who should I send it? You can send it. To your name. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know. I've met you before. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You've met a million people. Narrowly. Yeah. Yeah. I also yeah. was able to go to some of the public presentation, oh, public okay. meeting, and I'm, I'm very impressed with it. All right. My question was, uh, I think you had the same one about the boundary. Yeah. You know, that was the one, but um, it makes sense to kind of go in order of... Uh, once there's some cash, and then we just can't it, it, deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it, it could be expensive. Yeah. Uh, potentially. Yeah, and it's it, it's no matter right now, other than we should get it right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad it's called out. So. Yeah. So it's not. Oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we are painting boundaries, but we won't paint that stretch till. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that's in there too. That yeah. There'll be. Painted mm -hmm. in a different way going forward. Yeah, we'll try to keep up with it. So you're good. So I, I you know, thank okay. you for doing this. Thank and, and you. Like you said, it's a big project and a big goal. Yeah. Um, and now we seem to have the whole picture of you know where where to go with this really important yeah. resource. Yeah. I mean, we we've been using it for things mostly in the last eight years only for recreation yeah. and you know. Carbon and it, season, fish, water quality, da 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 da. And, it, but, and um, it does have the distinction of being a, a, a national, national historic, historic site. site. That's right. Yeah. 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 We're we're pretty lucky to have our yeah. town forest. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll bring it up at the next okay. one, and the plan would be to vote on it. Um, if anybody has comments, they can certainly come to the meeting, or okay. you know, have a select board member, or, or yeah, and let I'll us get know. you the latest copy. Yeah. Whatever. Thank you. Takes and if you want to come to the next meeting, you can. I'll show up. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, while we're talking town fire stuff. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Um, now, very important. Yes. It's been brought to our attention, thanks to Andrea, that Steve Russell has been involved with the town fire since, or was involved with the town fire since at least 1963. 19, yeah. And so Steve um, Russell was, passed away about a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was chair for a long, long time. He helped his dad and some other siblings plant the plantations up there. Um, and he, he put a lot of time and energy and caring into that town forest. Um, fellowship wants to work with our committee to do some sort of acknowledgement. Um, I don't know if our committee will be able to take that on on our meeting on Thursday um, depends on who attends, um, but I feel like the town really has to do something mm -hmm. to acknowledge. I think we would. Yeah, I mean, that's we will. pretty yeah. amazing. Since <laughs> 1963 or before, or before, and he's been to these meetings a couple of times, oh, yeah. representing the town forest. Yeah. So certainly his heart was in it. No yes. question about it. Yes, and I feel like without his long viewpoint on the town forest committee will be lacking. Mm. So, yeah. Well, you're not, you're the the um, next longest serving and member. Brent really knows the forest pretty well. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Slightly different outlook on it. But right. <laughs> right. Yeah. He, he, he's really the <laughs> yeah. forest person. But, um, well, certainly this town is made up of significant people who volunteer and. Yeah give service to the town, and this is a yeah. you know, uh, shining example yeah. I mean, of Steve's what that means. Ab above and beyond yeah. what anybody else. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Can I? Um, I forgot to add something to the agenda. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> and we have some people here. Yeah. Well, I was gonna yeah. uh, see if you, someone wanted to make you know make a comment. We yes. went through our comment. No. Yeah. But go ahead. Dude. Well, um, I just wanted to acknowledge um, that. Uh, Marcello, if you'd like to come up to the table, um, and um, uh, that Marcello uh, is a CVU exchange, a exchange student, um, and uh, she organized uh, the installation of two benches mm -hmm. up along the rec path. Uh, mm -hmm. So she got six, five fellow um, CVU students to help last Monday in the rain, nice. um, put in these two benches that um, had been donated by Rob uh, Bast and Laura Carl Smith. Okay. Um, and so I just wanted Marcella to come shot. in and maybe tell Good us a little shot. bit about what the project was and um, for us to thank her and yeah. give a public thank you to her. So I'm here with a program called FLAX, Future Leaders Exchange. Mm -hmm. And my country of origin is Moldova. It's a small country in Europe. Yeah. And they give us this opportunity to come here and study a year abroad in U.S., living with a host family. He's my host dad, Bill Schubert yeah. and Kate Schubert. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, that's more like a full scholarship program. So I don't pay anything for coming here and studying, but I have to work like community service and I have some obligations like uh, one of those is through presentation about my country which I do in school in different classes and students actually are very interested to learn about another country uh, the other one the number one is um, volunteering and I've done a hundred hours of community service in in Burlington, Heinsburg. And the third one, the biggest project for me is this project, which means uh, organizing and asking people to help you, like volunteering to work together and do something for the community you live in. Um, so to thanks to thanks my my this town that welcomed welcomed me and the school and everything, um, I got in touch with Andrea Andrea Morganti and we decided together to install three benches actually, but we had time just for two of them, so hopefully we'll do the third one as well. And I had five other CV students helping me and my host dad. And we worked together maybe for four, three hours, I guess. And we installed three, uh, two benches on the sidewalks uh, on CVU area. And yeah, actually I'm really happy that I could do something for Heinsburg and to thank somehow the community that helped me so much to integrate here and improve my language and everything I got here. Wow. Thank you very much. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I did notice them, I think, on um, last Wednesday. I went up the sidewalk and uh, I said, oh, those look really nice. Yeah. And so now I'll know to thank Marcella every time I see those benches. They really add to the, to the important sidewalk yeah. we have there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Sure, mm -hmm. thank you. And we'll Make sure that we get an article in the Heinsberg record about it as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that was good. That's awesome. Uh, next item on the agenda is <clears throat> this is a a, a a every meeting now we've had. This will be the second one in <laughs> two meetings. A request to waive uh, a permit fee. Um, from Usher Nalet, and uh, you wrote a memo explaining why you supported this request, and maybe you could just give a quick overview. Oh, sure. I'll make it very brief. Um, the landowners, uh, Carl Usher and Samantha Nalet, uh, built a new home uh, off of 
Pond Road. Craggy Lane is the name of the new road, if anybody's curious. It, it had This is the third house, so it had to get an official name. We're just curious about the name. I don't know where it came <laughs> from, actually. Um, it's on property that Tom McGlenn owned, actually, yep. who was our DRB chair for many years. In any case, uh, they built a new home, got a zoning permit, as they were uh, required. Uh, very amicable to work with. And um, like most folks, they had a construction loan. And towards the end of the project, um, the bank said for them to be able to release the final payments so they could put on their deck, they needed the house. They needed a certificate of occupancy, but we don't give certificates of occupancy for portions of projects that aren't done yet. So we gave them a couple of options and asked them to re talk to their bank about what would work. And um, the option that worked best for the bank uh, was to issue um, a certificate of occupancy for just the house and acknowledge that the deck was not built. And so that's what we did. So instead of a temporary, or instead of yeah, a, instead, instead of, of a, a conditional, conditional seal, which, a perm, is, yeah, which is what we thought would be the easier of the options, the bank wasn't amenable to that apparently. So um, we gave them a, a, a final CO without the deck. Um, and uh, they then came in for a, a second permit for the deck. Um, but it's been our policy ever since I've been here not to refund money for permits where people don't build a certain part of it. Um, so we, we didn't refund them any money for the deck portion that they had paid for originally. Uh, and so with their new permit, uh, they're asking for you to waive the fee on, on, a, on the deck that they've already paid for, which mm -hmm. seems reasonable. Yeah. I any comments on this? A little bit of bureaucracy run around there, yeah. and I guess, and putting things in the right order to um, follow certain systems that are in place that are maybe in, it'd be easier in if, conflict if with we others. Could just you know yes. refund money. It'd be easier if banks would just you know do things that were easy for people, but sometimes those systems yeah. don't yeah. work so that way. Yeah, so I I I get that entirely. It was very clear your yeah yes, the memo, the memo to me was, was very clear. Yeah. So yeah, considering they already paid for the deck piece of the permit, and um, they were in a way forced to get the certificate of occupancy earlier than they wanted, and so that seems reasonable. Andrea. Yeah. Well, in um, fact, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Uh, I move that the fee for the zoning permit 2018-32 uh, be waived pursuant to the request by the landowner, and as outlined in the recommendation by Director of Planning and Zoning dated April 30th, 2018. And seconded. seconded. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 So none opposed. The motion passed. And thank you. I'll yeah. let them know. All right. Thanks, Alex. Where did you get the wording for the motion? It was bottom it was of the memo. The memo. Oh, was it? I didn't memo. see it. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. You did. Bad. Good <laughs> thinking. Yes, I remember now. It was in there. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Uh, the next item is the um, sidewalk, Village South Sidewalk Project uh, grant application. I think in, it's not a new application. It's an amended one. Is that right? Yeah, the background is that uh, two years ago we applied for a grant um, in cooperation or coordination with uh, Alan and Nancy Norris, who are the developers and landowners that are doing the uh, a, a development project, 24 units of housing on the south side of the village, and um, that we applied for a grant so that that uh, a connecting sidewalk on Route 116 that's not on their property but is necessary for their uh, development to go forward as as a condition of the development <laughs> review board approval, so that sidewalk could be built and funded. Uh, and the agreement was that the Norrises would pay the required 20% local match, and and we would seek a grant for the estimated cost. Um, uh, which uh, the state will cover 80% of, of the estimated cost. So they would pick up 20%, the grant would pick up 80%. It was based on a, on a uh, feasibility study that had a, a projected cost estimate of $150,000. And now that we've gone through conceptual design um, and we've actually signed contracts for the engineers who are doing that work, um, we know it's going to cost quite a lot more than uh, the original estimate. So instead of 150000 it looks like it's probably going to come in at 250000 So um, we're easily $100,000 short. Now, the Norrises are responsible for picking up whatever that balance is, not the town. But 
Um, I talked to John Kaplan at the Bike Ped Program for the state who manages these grant programs, and he said it's not unusual for projects once they get into design phase to, to, to see cost overruns, and it is possible to apply for a grant in a future year to help make up the difference. Um, so I haven't written that yet. I wanted to talk to you first and see if you were amenable to uh, you know, me spending time uh, putting together a grant application on that front. Um, I, I don't know how competitive it will be, and I don't know whether they'll be willing to fund that entire assumed $100,000 gap. Right. It might be a lesser amount, but uh, it seems like, a, seems like a reasonable idea to ask mm -hmm. for it and see if we can get it. Um. Isn't this already now part of the, um, isn't it on the tip? Uh, I don't know, Andrea, actually. I, I, it, it may be. And so once it's in the program, mm -hmm. when these cost overruns start coming in, they kind of... Cover them? Kind of cover them. But think, John didn't mention that? No, because I think in this case, there's a specific grant funding source through the Bike Ped program and... Um, it's for a defined amount, so I'm not sure how the TIP, which is the Transportation Improvement Program that the Regional Planning Commission helps um, shepherd, I'm not sure if that can sort of trump a, a grant amount and just boost it automatically. I can talk to John talk about to that because that's, I mean, that's an interesting I mean, or, take. Or talk to uh, Christine. Mm -hmm. for at, first at the RTC, yeah. and ask her. I'll, I'll do that. I mean, I'll talk, I mean I'll because we're Christine. always approving amendments especially you know when when it when you get the final documents and okay now they're saying 250 and then you get into right of way and it's going to get up to it gets more 300 yeah. you know it's going to be ongoing so um i so, mean i, I so certainly would support uh, applying for it um but I would just check that yeah, first. Sure. Yeah, I think yeah. from a policy standpoint, you're a policy board. The real decision here is, is there another sidewalk project that you were hoping or we should be applying for in this cycle? This is an annual grant that's, you know, once a year um, uh, and, and not applying for this amendment to the existing project. So that's sort of a policy decision. That's mm -hmm. really what I'm trying to take your temperature with tonight. My, my perspective is we ought to we ought to get this project done. We're committed to it. We already have, you know, investment in it, and um, and, and it has a it has a good purpose. It's not just to serve this one development. It'll serve the whole south end of the village, right. Friendship Lane and the like. Uh, and Buck Hill. Buck and yeah. Yeah. To, yeah. Empty out of Buck Hill. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's worth doing. If you're of the same mind, then I'll check on Andrea's uh, question first, and then assuming that there isn't an easier vet avenue that doesn't involve me having to write another grant, I'll write it and bring it back to you in June so you can review the application, unless you don't even want to see it, in which case I'll just write it and I work mean, with Renee could. and Joy to submit it. I mean, I think we'd probably want to see it, but I don't know if, if, we, if we had a motion and approved you moving forward with amending or seeking the additional funds to match, you know, the actual cost, mm -hmm. then... Um, actual estimated cost. Yeah. Yeah, it's still an estimate. Yeah. As Andrea said, it could change again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so other than state right away, is there other right aways that need to be... Well, I mean, I think that the final design's not done, okay. and, and I certainly would like to see yeah. this sidewalk not be a repeat of what's happened mm -hmm. going north mm -hmm. um, and um, you know that if it does need right of way or you know there's the, always the wetlands issues and and how the design happens then then um, you know I, I we're not going to see that in the application but I guess I, I'm just no. concerned about <clears throat> the um, the you know that we really push for a design that's going to be work long term for us in terms of the maintenance and that these sidewalks are usable year round. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. that's all. And, and that we not, you know, like, yeah, that's all I'll say now. Marilee? Yeah, it sounds like a, a good plan to move forward if, if you have to, if you find out that it's not already taken care of with the tip thing. The other thing is, you know, I would say that it would be probably good to keep the uh, trails committee abreast of this and mm -hmm. 
you know, and village steering committee or whatever. Just Will do. And there's no question yeah. finishing off something mm -hmm. we've started is, is a key right. here. So, yes. Because um, there isn't anything else um, sort of in the in the where I mean, I'm thinking. We're just desperately trying to finish exactly. these two projects. Yeah, exactly. The Village just, North project right. to Riggs Road along right. the east side of 160. That's the other one And I'm the thinking Village of. South project to from the school south to, to Buck Hill on the south side or east, west side. And that's not a zero sum with that one. No. So, you know. No. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice to. Although we haven't. Well, it'd be nice to finish these two and then move on to a new one. Right. Uh, um. It, you know, as opposed to applying for a new one this year, I, I'm, I'm actually of the mind it'd be nice to apply for a new sidewalk project every year. Mm -hmm. We just don't seem to be able to bring them off fast enough for that yeah. to be realistic. Um, yeah. and, and the process is very long term. So, <coughs> I mean, we should be planning on what might be the next. I think we, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think the that's village a big discussion. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. I mean, people have ideas. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the other thing to talk about is to not use grants mm -hmm. to do these projects and they would get done a They'd be, faster, faster, they'd be but, faster, but they and would be very cheaper. big project, right. and they right. might be cheaper. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The the um, problem is where the money, like the overall cost, is likely to be cheaper, but the actual town and or landowner contribution right. might be quite a bit more, and so it's right. it's tough to balance okay. that. But okay, so I have so I have I, your yeah, sense. So and I'm and I'm I'm okay with this. I mean, again, it really, I mean, the town has some. Um, you know, town time and all that is associated with the grant, but it does, you know, it is on the Norris to pay the non-matching right. piece. And so, <laughs> um, and this does serve the south end of the town. And, you know, there are children trying to walk to school and there's no sidewalk there. So it's right. not a good, good situation. I think the other thing to consider is, um, you know, when we started the North One project, there was going to be a project manager for it. Right. And I think that, that, you know, one of the reasons that that project, I think, has taken so long was that it just kind of fell through cracks and, you know, there was nobody uh, um, really pushing, pushing it. on it. And so um, I think it's, you know, I think having Alex write the grant is great, but we should really identify how the project is going to move along. And that could just it, be included in and as it part could be. of the grant. So right. we'll, we yeah, should consider so that. We're required to have a municipal project manager. We've hired that out to um, Cy Sarapelli at the Regional Planning Commission. So he's he's doing most of the administrative paper pushing. Okay. Um, but I still, th so I think that's partially covered, but I still think Andrea is right on the money that it, it, it's really important that somebody in this building, or not this building, somebody in our organization yeah. is, is charged with keeping, keeping track of a project and moving it forward. It w really wasn't until Renee took over the reins that that project got right. moving again. Yeah. And it's really thanks to her that it is. And um, so, so it's... So potentially funds for that could be part of the estimate of getting Yeah, I think in, in this case we have that ball is already rolling. Okay. But, but with regard to the next sidewalk project, yeah. if it's the big Richmond Road one or if it's just a simple one up the east side of 116 yeah. between Commerce and Mechanicsville, it, I agree. It'd be good to have a town staff person assigned to the project and then a, maybe a separate project manager manager to yeah. push paper okay so it sounds like we've got approval okay know that we need a motion well i'll just mm -hmm. i'll just yeah. draft it and get it yeah. to you for the one of the june meetings the right. submission deadlines good. in in june yeah let's get 20 second let's get the sidewalk underway okay and any speaking of the north side now to um riggs road is that um what's the status on that uh, well, actually, it's in front of the Development Review Board right. on uh, was next last week. That was last week, wasn't it? Was. It, it yeah, wasn't they, this week. Uh, yeah, Doug Henson was there to present it, and they uh, re reviewed it favorably and are having um, Mitch draft an approval. Uh, so it's moving along well. What I heard Doug Henson say, who's who's our consultant yeah. working on it, is that there's still one final bit to go through on the VTrans side, but he's I think both he and Renee said there's there's hope that it would go out to bid soon. Yeah. Um, maybe this in, year. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 I misspoke. I think when um, I, I thought it had already gone out to bid last time. So we'll have to correct the minutes or 
make mm -hmm. a note on it or something. But yeah, Doug did say yeah. soon, and I think Renee said the hope was June. So that's all real, real positive, finally, yeah. <laughs> for that one. All right. So that's good. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, we had the subdivision regulation proposals, changes brought to us. We discussed them. There were three or four items we talked about. Um, and one item was a section in there that talked about the need to have um, a uh, survey a sur surveyor identify boundaries in, in certain conditions, I think, for, for all boundary property adjustments. boundary adjustments. Just that line. Just um, the line of the boundary. Not the whole property. Right. And so the situation where this comes up is if two adjoining <clears throat> landowners, you know, clarify a boundary or uh, uh, family members adjust a boundary um, and they can do that now, n not necessarily with a professional surveyor doing that boundary, but just by providing the description. Is that? Yes. Filling out a form and providing a description. That goes in the land records. The description goes right. in the land it's, records. It's recorded. Yeah. There's a deed that goes yeah. with it, and it's yeah. recorded. But it's just two property owners agreeing that this is what we're going to call it. Right. And that's the end of the day. Right. Yeah. So Generally I'm here to... an attorney. True. <clears throat> I'm here to speak about that because I'm the person who requested this. I've been um, asking Alex for years to change it and not allow the way we presently do it um, because it is very difficult for me and my office to do the work without a survey. Um, it's very ambiguous because it's two people agreeing but um, who knows if, they, if they're right or not. And there could be other properties that are affected by that because maybe the points that they're agreeing on are come off from another piece of property that you just don't know. So um, it's also, also um, so it's very time consuming uh, for me and um, also for our tax mapper of which We've had tax maps for a very long time, but um, I know that Nemrick, who is the consultants that I use, and also they are our tax mappers now, <clears throat> have said to me for years, why does your town allow this? Most towns don't, and they work all over the state. Um, so um, it's just not a good practice. I think that um, there are people objecting to this, to my idea, and I th my guess is it's because of finances, but um, I have talked with several surveyors, and um, it's not, and I've personally experienced it because um, my husband and I did a boundary adjustment a few years ago between our business property and our residential, and I would never think of doing something like that without a survey, thinking of the future. And I think it was like $1,000. Um, it was a few years ago, but it, it's not like having a total survey done, which um, someone had said to me that they'd been quoted between three to $8,000. But this is just one line that we're asking to be, to be done. And they do use GIS, um, but it will be accurate when it's done. Um, so as I said, most towns require it. We're old fashioned that we don't. Um, even in the Northeast Kingdom, which is much less densely, I mean, we're Chittenden County, the most densely populated county in our state. And um, we don't, we're not asking people to do that at the present time. They, m most of the towns up in the Northeast Kingdom in Franklin County, I've been told, actually request that. Um, so if there is a survey with a deed, um, it totally memorial memorializes that line. And um, that's the other thing that quite often can happen is people pick up, um, I'm not sure what you call what you put in the ground, and move them. 
But if there's a survey, it's on the survey, so you know, um, you know that where it belongs. So really, surveys are the gold standard. That's you know what we look at, and it, they're required for our subdivisions always. And it, I, that my work just sails through that. I just don't think that the town sh should be paying my office or the tax mapper to figure out where this boundary adjustment is and is it correct is it correct i think really that should be the responsibility of the landowner and um that's really why i'm asking for a survey um so i think i've gone through all my reasoning and oh, I, one other thing i wanted to mention and there are some areas in town where our tax maps are so not incorrect where surveys have not been done one is in the beginning of the hollow road which borders property that that i own and all of most of the people one, one person now has had a survey done but the others have never been surveyed so it looks on our tax maps like they're over onto our property by quite a bit. One person built a house and they, you know, we signed a paper saying we know that, or they know it's wrong, but there's nothing that the tax mapper can do to correct that until the surveys are done, which who knows when that will happen. And I'm not asking people to go out and get surveys, only if they do a boundary adjustment. It's also another place where we're very much off is down on East Shore Lane on the lake, and it's very difficult if, if somebody wanted to do a boundary adjustment there, I can't imagine, because of the lake, yeah, would right. be not a good situation at all. So, um, you know, I'm just sharing a little of some of the, and, and I will tell you that when people do these boundary adjustments, and the other one that's allowed, and I, maybe that's changing, Alex can correct me if I'm wrong, is sale of land to an adjoiner for purposes of ag or forestry. They want those on the tax map. And a lot of people, one year I made a mistake and we didn't get one on. I don't know if it was because of me. And they were right in, like, I want it on there. And it's like, well, of course. And it was my, our error, and we will get it on. But you know, this is just a tool. We don't really know if what you're telling us is correct. Um, anyway. So where you're saying that it's a transfer for it's transfer of land to an adjoiner which is like a boundary adjustment but it's for the purposes of ag or forestry so that's all right. they can do with right. it but you're saying that we're not requiring a um, boundary Sur a survey there right and I don't know Alex is that going to change or is that going to still did you combine those two no so the way the way the housekeeping proposal is written um, boundary line adjustments would require survey and the creation of lots for ag, forest, or conservation would still not require a survey. I'm not going to go there tonight. <laughs> I, I mean, I would just be very happy yeah. to go this one step. I think yeah. it should have been done years ago. Um, but um, yeah. any other questions? Any questions? or? Any questions? Well, I, I didn't, you know, definitely yeah. I was um, anxious to have Marie come in and, and talk about it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've been mulling it over. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think, you know, it's like in the here and now, it seems like a um, uh, why bother? But it definitely impacts the future. And I think it really will help in the long term clean up the tax maps as more and more Great. parcels are surveyed yep. and you know it, it just is and and people tend to take our tax maps and think that they're accurate yep. yes. and they're not, they're not even though there's big disclaimers on them yes. so i mean i still think we have to do that on the tax maps yes. but we should be working towards more accuracy absolutely and the other thing is um some people, you know, um, deeds are quite often not right. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not saying that attorneys don't do a good job. I think it's just the information they're given and, and it, there can be errors. And um, 
Yeah, so I just don't think a deed is sufficient in these in this area and um, can yeah. I ask so how many times in the I'll say the last few years about how many times a year yeah. do we have these boundary right. adjustments n n that was I forgot to say that thanks for asking that question um, there aren't a lot of them a year might go by and I we won't won't see any and then you know um, maybe one or two it's not a lot it really is not a lot um, but, um, it, it, and the other thing I was going to say is some, some people who have create their own lot or create their own lots through these boundary adjustments and then they write their deeds and they don't really know what they're doing and then they come back and they want, I've been asked many times, well, aren't you going to help me straighten this out? And it's like, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not qualified to do that. And Mitch, even um, when he was um, zoning administrator, did one that I said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. He really went 10 extra miles to try to straighten them out. And he, he could, and he's way more knowledgeable than I, being an engineer. And he just couldn't do it. It just was. But but in this situation, in that situation, a, a simple survey would have. Yes, you know, and it in up, fact, the one I'm talking about, I think um, that a, a surveyor and an engineer here in town yeah. um, got involved and has maybe helped them a little. Helped them a little. Well, they don't want to do a full survey, ah. and I because they don't, you know, they don't maybe even have the money. Mm -hmm. I, but um, anyway, what I'm asking is is just one line. And it would, like Andrea said, it's going to help fine tune our tax maps. And it's for everybody's best interest in the end, really, if you're thinking about the future. So. Any more? Yeah, I'm totally in favor of it. Thank you for coming, Marie. You're what welcome. you said makes absolute sense to me. And I, I, the fact that most towns in Vermont, even in the Northeast Kingdom, already require this. Uh, that should be enough, but the reasons that you gave are very sensible. Thank you. Um, I also wanted you to know that Tom isn't here, but he did write me over the weekend, and he asked me to text him, and I gave him a very brief, as, be as best you can do in a text, um, of what I was going to say tonight. So, yeah. so I did uh, talk to him more via email, and he said that he was, um, I'll say, reluctant or you know, really unsure about moving forward with this. But then after talking with you, he said, you know, he would go with the majority. Okay. So, um, Mike, did you want to? Well, I know, I and you gave us some documentation yep. in our packet from VLCT on cost of surveying. Is that? Vermont State Surveyor people. Oh, okay. <laughs> v Vermont's a V something. Yeah. Yeah. V but I, I guess others. I don't understand the role of the deed and the role of the law lawyer with the deed. But so, and I don't want to go there. So my point that I'm trying to make is that actually I think survey might be considered old-fashioned. I mean, we all have cell phones in front of us that can pinpoint markers all over the place. I mean, land that, that places that need to be made for simple surveys. And I've talked to Marie about this, and I totally get where she's coming from. She's a lister. I mean, if I was the fire chief, I would want sprinkler systems in the Newtown garage. And um, so I, but I still think it's just adding to the bills. I'm not, I, I think about the other extre simple extremes, the simple survey, like the simple adjustments that could be written up by, uh, legally using modern technology. And that's my point that I've been trying to make is why, why increase costs. But the surveyor will use the modern technology. That's why they can do one line as less expensively, because they do use GIS. And I'm not a surveyor. I'm just repeating a little bit of what I was told. And they really can do it. And back to what Mike's saying, it's just two people agreeing, and you don't even know if they have it correctly, because it sh that shot off other properties that you don't know if those are correct. So the surveyor, a lot of what a surveyor does, it's not just going out there and doing the physical survey. It's doing research to make sure that things are, in fact, correct. They, they need a starting point, so they've got to make sure their starting point correct. is correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. 
Thank you, Marie. You're welcome. That was very helpful. Thanks for asking. Um, so, Alex, I think you're looking for direction on this item. And yes. there were a couple of other tweaks we wanted to make to the wording of the document, I think. But they were pretty minor. All I remember was this was your last hanger on and that once you figured this out, I could warn a public hearing. Right. So how do you want to go and do you want to do you want to warn a public hearing? So, um, I mean, I'm hearing at least three people saying they want to go. I think Tom would go with the majority. So and I certainly I could go either way on this one, but it seems to make sense. And I would respect Marie's. I was going to say many years of, <laughs> of experience in this. So um, it sounds like the board would like to keep the wording the same as you had it, right? Which That's was what the Planning Commission this. proposal yep. was, yes, yep. to require a survey for boundary line adjustments. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. Well, then. Well, we, and we, I mean, there'll be the public hearing. And right, of course. And I'm sure we'll hear from people. Yeah. And we might, uh, That's true. You don't have to take action uh, at you know, right after that public hearing. If you hear some additional feedback that makes you change your mind on this or anything else, you can... Take some more right. time. We just the only other change we did was to, to we did not, I mean, the, the majority supported um, not going with the Planning Commission's recommendation to eliminate drive drive throughs. That's drive -throughs. right. That's, that's right. right. That's that was the one thing. That's pretty substantial. It's still yeah. a food, still would be. Right. Uh, leaving it as it is today. Yeah, leaving it as it is today. To that's uses. right. Yeah, that was the one item. It's in our minutes. So. Um, um, given that, um, you have a meeting on June 7th, right? That you switch to Thursdays yes. in June sure. mm -hmm. yeah. and that's the first Thursday mm -hmm. that would, if you're interested in going to a public hearing, that would be the first, you know, the, the earliest possible one. Okay. Um, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to work with Joy yeah. and Renee on yeah, figuring I, out what, that. what the mean, right meeting is that works, rather than that's pinning good. it down. But I know we have budget for the enterprise uh, water and wastewater that's due at the end of June, so I imagine that's going to take some effort. So I'd, I'd say work with them, uh, Joy and Renee, and just on next yeah, in the next week or so. And if it looks like there's time there, um, we could do it. We probably want to. I'm not sure how much time we'd want to have for that, but at least a half an hour, I would think. Yeah, I think so. I don't. This this whole batch of housekeeping changes hasn't generated a whole lot of public interest, to be perfectly honest. But I think you should anticipate mm -hmm. that there could be a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, at least a half an hour. Okay. All right. Great. So you'll get us the latest oh, yeah. copy. Yep. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you, Alex, again. Next item on the agenda. Um is an update well discuss no an update on the wastewater discharge permit and implications to Heinsberg. Um, we got a draft I think it's still a draft permit and there was a legal chance not a draft okay well why don't you guys come up so it's Wayne and Eric but it's being challenged by CLF uh, Conservation Law Foundation. Now the, the permit was signed on the 26th of January. Okay. It became effective March 1st. Yep. So I guess I'll start off with um, updates on where we're at. I know I'd left, excuse me, I'd left some, some optimistic hope, I guess, that I could somehow wrangle this um, lagoon beast into, you know, at least some phosphorus compliance with the, the uh, process changes I'd made. And I'm sad to say that it, it, I can't do it. <laughs> a little, I'm, I'm too optimistic. Yeah, I was, we've, we've, we've definitely made, imp it's, it's improved things, but Early spring is early spring in the lagoon, and there's really nothing you can do about it. I mean, we were going from point eight to point two. Yes. Right. Um, well, not really, but yeah. So, yeah. Oh, wait, in effect, yes. Yeah, we, we have a, a a total pounds limit of 152 pounds for the year. Um, for this year, now that's on a that's on a compliance schedule. 
but because this winter was just difficult for this year, we have already surpassed the entire year. As of right now. As of right now. And the year right. is the oh, yes. calendar year the or calendar the calendar year. Yep. And that doesn't go up and down, that just goes up. That just goes up. Were those violations to our permit? Um, no, because it's on a, the five year compliance schedule. So there's no oh, immediate th issue. This is the new limit. Right. This <laughs> right. is the new okay. limit. Got it's you. on the schedule. Yeah. Um, and we're just it it just shows that we're we're not able to meet it. We and we were never able to, to meet the ammonia. So we, my hope is I could, you know, meet the phosphorus and then do a much, you know, tighter ammonia upgrade. But I, I had to come to the realization that's just not the case. Um, so so I, I, well, go ahead. I, I have a bunch of questions, yeah. but uh, you want, let's wait until you finish. Are you all set? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was just going to kind of give you the brief overview. Um, yes. I figure it was good to just hear from Eric and, you know, understand his struggles he's had over the last few months. We all kind of knew that it was going to be tough to meet those lower limits consistently anyways. So your discharge permit became effective on March 1st. And, of course, the two major changes in that, the first one was the uh, lower phosphorus limit. And right now that's still a concentration of 0.8 <coughs> milligrams per liter. Um, but the pounds are calculated on your permitted flow at the 0.2 milligrams per liter. So you're going from 608 down to 152 pounds per year. Uh, the ammonia limit, which is a challenge in the summer, you know, from June 1st to September 30th, is down to 3.5 milligrams per liter on a monthly average. Um, the good news on those permit limits is they aren't effective until you complete your trip facility upgrade. So as of right now, you're still operating under the previous limits. You're under, for example, the phosphorus, the, the 608 pounds. Uh, as part of working through the state with the, uh, you know, negotiating the changes in the discharge permit, uh, basically what they agreed upon is that the facility has to be operational by the end of 2022. Um, they wanted to make sure that, that they could keep that within that five-year window, which is the term of the discharge permit, okay? So the second piece is just to give you a really brief overview of the CLF appeal. Uh, so far, they have appealed nine permits, and their appeal is um, on the lower phosphorus limit. Is um, They don't feel that the uh, new limit goes far enough. Uh, and the state attorney general's office is taking the lead on the uh, litigation, so collectively they're kind of communicating with the individual communities and um, on the legal challenge. Uh, some communities have hired their own counsel, um, own attorneys, so they're kind of keeping an eye. They're all kind of partici participating in that process. And, and we've done that we've done too. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you've got Joe. I've talked to Joe McLean a couple times, yeah. Uh, and, and basically the, where that's at is a CLF kind of offered a counter proposal. They floated that, that out to the different communities that's been looked at. I don't think anybody's jumped on that at this point. Um, both CLF and the state are required to um, file the uh, for summary judgment with that stew in May here. Um, and they expect this to go to court, um, you know, June, July time frame. It's probably going to be a little later than that, the way that kind of stuff goes. Can you remind us again, me anyways, who who the court is and who the, you know, where this goes? Uh, I'm not sure I can answer that. Uh, that's probably a Turkey's question. Um, we met with the um, A&R secretary last week, and they kind of gave us the um, deputy secretary gave us a brief update on just where that is. I'm not sure I can answer that quote specific Whether question. Whether it's environmental court? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. Superior. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or, so that's yeah. to be determined? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But... Everybody is kind of participating in that collectively. I mean, the state feels like they've got a pretty solid grounds, and EPA does too, so we've got to kind of let that play out. Um, the thing with that that's interesting is that even though that's under appeal and it's the phosphorus, um, each community is still subject to the requirements that are written into the discharge permits once mm -hmm. it's issued. So even though it's been appealed, um, you still got to follow the deadlines and the dates and everything in that permit and kind of let that, let that process play out. So... Um, they also 
Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, discharge permits that are out right now for uh, draft and review and they fully expect that those are going to be peeled as they come out also because it's the same. You know, sale based on the taking same, the same yeah. position, that's right, yeah. So, any questions on that stuff at all? Okay. Um, the next thing I was just going to give you a really rough overview of the uh, dates and the deadlines that are written into the permit. And uh, these are really specific to the total phosphorus and the, uh, the ammonia nitrogen. Uh, by February 28th, 2019, uh, the town's required to submit or develop and submit a plan. That's really kind of understood to be the preliminary engineering where you've gone through the assessment of the lagoon facility, you know, identified the project need, which is obviously the compliance with the lower regulatory requirements. Um, you go through the alternatives analyses, the cost, and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's yeah. due. Which yes. you essentially did a year and a yeah. two yeah, years ago. This is a lot more comprehensive, though, with what the state's looking for. So basically, under this timeline, Andrea, that what they're and I can talk a little bit about the next steps here at the end. Um, they're really going to be looking for a po full preliminary engineering study. We did kind of an initial kind of ten thousand foot planning study just to give you an idea of you know what some of the constraints were and limitations and where you may have to go with this and a couple this is, of options yeah options. very really kind of really to but really, you really of, can maybe revisit the whole thing you're gonna have to yeah, yeah, okay. yeah absolutely okay. Mm -hmm. we would build off that report absolutely right. yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. no that's right. not that that's actually kind of one stepping stone in the whole thing but the plan engineering is, is much more detailed i mean you're looking at preliminary layouts down there um, to see, you know, what you can do with the existing lagoon facility where you would site something. Um, well, it, yeah, I mean, I guess w what I would say is that, you know, as opposed to just jumping immediately to fixing the lagoon, yeah. it seems to me we may have some other issues that we yeah. might want to address yeah. before that based on um, the amount of infiltration that we're getting. Um, I did some calculations, and so, and also looking at, um, you know, what other options, you know, where's all the phosphorus coming from? Do we have some heavy users? You know, it, you know in years past, we forced the cheese factory to build their own lagoons. So I, I just would like to um, make sure that we're exploring and correctly identifying what all the problems are before we immediately go to um, redesigning the whole system. But, but, but yeah, and that's a good, you know, the lagoon really wasn't ever intended to, as a facility meet to meet these, yeah. meet right, these right. little limits. But yeah, those are all good things. I mean, okay. I mean yeah, obviously we want to tighten up the sewer yeah. system yeah. because that's mm -hmm. full that you may not have to treat. I think we would all envision, you know, Eric and I were just talking about that, is if you have to go through, and if you ever get to the point where you're going to do a new facility, you're going to request additional treatment capacity anyways because that's, it's kind of scalable a little bit. It's not a lot more cost to go from 250 to 300,000 or 350 when you kind of get into that that extensive type of work. And that's a, you know, that's a 40 or 50 year decision for the town. But you know, you'd want to look at all those options, and that's that's part of it. So, but it seems like we must know what's coming in for phosphorus. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you know, to answer Andrea's question, is this what would be typical for the users we have? Or is, is there, you know, a higher load, you know, from infiltration or something like that? I don't know. Yeah, you can look at some of the different customers and see what yeah. the contributions are. And, yeah. you know, maybe they can do some better housekeeping or do some things to try to do that. Um, the thing is, no matter what you did on the front end, you still couldn't get to that lower limit with the mm -hmm. lagoon. And, you know, you're in this, unfortunately, as we talked about, if you were just dealing with the floor phosphorus limit, you could possibly do something with what you have there as an additive. But um, the ammonia. Is yeah, you, you can't, by the time you do both, you mm -hmm. end up with something completely, completely different to hit both of those. So, uh, And then the other thing is there's a... Um, as I mentioned, so they're looking for you to achieve compliance by the end of December 2022, um, and there's a couple um, optimization plans that are, but but again, those those are those are a ways out. Uh, Reapplication of the discharge permit is due on June 30th, 2022, and when we work through the schedule with the state, basically what you do, you know, for a, nine to 12 months you'd be in the planning side the preliminary engineering where you'd look at a you know proposed project come up with costs look at funding options 
Um, ultimately, you'd have to do a bond vote, you know, and then you're looking at a year of design permitting and maybe a year and a half to years of construction. So that really kind of puts you out to the five years. And um, part of the reason initially we had a couple options because if you have a bond vote and it doesn't pass, you know, the sort said to the state, you know, what happens there? And they said, you know, we'll deal with that kind of when you get to that point. But they really wanted to try to keep the compliance with these limits within the five year. And they thought if they didn't do that, that it could have possibly gotten appealed on that case also, not in addition to the phosphorus. So, mm -hmm. so any questions on the discharge permit? That's a really good point though, about having a bond vote yeah. that doesn't pass. Yeah. That, I mean, is, I know you kind of just somewhat casually said we'll deal with it we come to that that's a plus a and r said they'll deal with it yeah, 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 yeah but like yeah. is no. that really something we bank on or? well that's that's not something with you know the town, town's control right. you know which is why we tried to stretch it out i mean you went through that before where you know you had the first one didn't pass you went to yeah. the second and i've been to through some of these where it's taken two or three so, so that's what i'm thinking mm -hmm. this is a, you know that's um, probably what's going to happen yeah you know you have to go through the exercise and the project and you know go through the initial vote and then see where it lands. Um, one thing that's always interesting about these projects is that the whole town votes. Yes. Um, right. So this that much throws pays, some this interesting twists into it because yeah, a lot of the about people <laughs> voting um, don't really have a vested interest or it's not going to be a cost associated well, to them. Right. And I mean, but they have an interest in well, how they, the village they do. develops they or do, not yeah, develops. or Businesses so. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree with that. I mean, that you've got the infrastructure in the village, so you can have, you know, the restaurants and the schools and all that, which everybody in the town benefits. But as you know, it comes down to who's going to pay and who's going to pay what. So, yeah. Um, but you go through the first bond vote, and then kind of, if it doesn't pass, and you kind of take a step back and regroup and see what else you can do there. Um, and that's that's could be a possibility. So. Well, I know. Um uh, Governor Scott was uh, maybe a couple months ago was talking about you know wanting to see some innovation and yeah. trying to do stuff right. so yeah. Yeah. you know I was kind of like oh yeah here's an opportunity let's, yeah. let, let's see what we can yeah. what we can come up with it's all phosphorus. Yeah. well yeah. phosphorus is a not a renewable resource sure. so I mean if somebody is going to come up with a way to, yeah. way to harvest it mm -hmm. yeah so. Any other questions on the deadlines or dates or timeline or anything? Or No, it would be good to yep. um, see it on a single page, sure. you know? That would be really <laughs> helpful, sort of say, yeah. you know. Yeah. Alex? So, Wayne, did I hear that it's February of 2019 that the mm -hmm. state's looking for a preliminary design? Yeah. A, a, a plan, that's correct. Preliminary yeah, yeah. Plan. So that's, that's less right. than yeah. a year away. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that costs money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that was a, that's a good segue into the next step. So uh, basically, the schedule with the state that was laid out, you know, proposed the bond vote in March 2019. Um, so the next piece of that, which you're getting into the funding side, so there is planning money available through the Clean Water SRF program. Heinsberg is on the priority list um, right now for the um, engineering side of things. There is a 50% loan subsidy. Unfortunately, the caps keeps decreasing every year, but for the next fiscal year, it's down to 100,000, a maximum of 100,000. Um, to qualify for that, what you have to do is go out to a qualifications-based selection process. So it's a matter of there's a kind of a standard ad that needs to be run in the newspaper. You know, you can put it up on the town website. Um, you're gonna request qualifications from different consultants. Um, you're not allowed to request any kind of a scope of work or fee-based proposal because it disqualifies you from the loan subsidy. Um, it's really there to meet, it's not driven as much by the state, it's to meet some of the federal water requirements um, with, with the funding side of things. So then what you do, you know, you get three or four weeks, you receive the statements of qualifications. Um, typically what most communities, you know, then you'll shortlist to probably three, do interviews. Um, then you select a consultant and at that point then you work, put a scope of work together. Um, the state's involved in that. They review, you know, and approve the scope of work. And then there's a planning loan application that goes along with that. So that's really your primary source of funding for this initial planning stage. Um, 
What's that? For the grant, 100000 Well, this original planning study isn't anywhere near that, Aaron. Um, that's just the maximum. Unfortunately, three years ago, it was 500000 and every yeah. year it's been, they, they were, they've had um, excess funds, so they started that to kind of incentivize communities to do more planning so they could pour more money in the projects. Um, it's dropped from, you know, 250 to 200,000 as of, you know, July 1st for the next fiscal year, it's down to 100,000. So, so depending when you get the application approved, that's when you're going to really be locked in for that subsidy. Um, there is subsidy and there's grant money available for construction, but that's part of this exercise when you go through the planning and you get into a proposed project and, you know, you look at the Where financing and, yeah. you know, whether it's a USDA grant loan combination or something with the state. So that's something you'll look at as part of that and look at the impact on the sewer rates and projected O&M costs and all that kind of stuff. So And um, because everybody's going through this right now, is that going to be more difficult to help you know source some funding um, it's not at this point uh, don't see that probably changing in the next couple three years but uh, as we go on over the next probably four or five years the funds gonna start to get a little bit tighter um, mm -hmm. hopefully the governor um, you know at some point they step in and you know you've read about enough about the clean water fund and yeah. the needs and out there yeah. and that's still kind of pending out there but right now there's enough money but where we're at three or four years um, what's interesting with the phosphorus is you know not every community need, you know needs to go through this step either they've got they've different got the design facilities yeah. they've got filtration um, so several of these facilities can comply with a lower limit already without yep. doing any kind of capital you know significant capital improvement so you guys are kind of in a unique case where you've got the lagoon which wasn't ever designed to comply with those lower phosphorus limits and then you're also hit with the lower ammonia limit too which was you know has been out there for a while wasn't unexpected mm -hmm. well we, when you, you say lower ammonia i don't think we had a limit did we before no. on ammonia no so yeah, it was monitor only right? it was monitor yeah, that's uh, just right. monitor yeah, yeah. Yep. yep that's right yeah no limit and this one definitely does set the limit i thought we still with no limit until 2022. Yeah, limits until on the schedule. The that's yeah. on the schedule. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's both are on the compliance <coughs> schedule. Well, it feels like, um, it, you know, we've been sort of waiting and putting this off to the side and not, it's not, in, it hasn't been directly in front of us, although yeah. we knew it's there. Mm -hmm. So now we've got you know, three or four years of work in yeah, front of sure. us. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest that we consider putting together a committee of, you know, a board member, Eric, consultant, you know, two or three more people in town who are, you know, ready to take on this project and sort of do some oversight. Because certainly the select board's not going to be a, a good place to yeah. make detailed decisions um, so that that might be something we consider I don't know how we did it in the past how the town did some of the this usually a select board member was pretty involved in right meeting with yeah. the engineer and yeah. um, wastewater superintendent and doing that so there was kind of a subcommittee before yeah. there was a, at least one yeah. or two board members mm -hmm. there right. was back there rocky and i think Jeannie was around yeah. at the time yeah so, yeah. <coughs> so that's what i think yeah. you know we ought to yeah. start we might we might bring john Treffer right back. yeah you could bring john rocky yeah. <laughs> right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so and the bigger yeah. thing is just to keep the schedule in mind you know um yeah that's really working and you know you're always kind of looking to do bond votes either in November or March. And before you ever get to that point, you know, you've got to go through, you know, the planning side and know what the project is and, you know, what the funding sources are and have good, you know, good hard numbers and, you know, what the impact of the sewer rates. And, you know, especially in this case, you know, you need some time to do some good public education outreach. Yeah. So what were the numbers that we you came up with, you know, a couple were, of years ago? Um, they were very range. They were like in the eight to ten million dollars range, right. um, yeah. and that's going to be a function of um, 
you know, I think whether you do any sludge dewatering too, you may mm -hmm. choose not to. So there may be some capital savings there. I think we mm -hmm. see a few years back if you did anything sludge related, you know, so you're going to have a different type of treatment plan. So SPI, you're going to have to is it SPI? or some fashion. It could be extended air oxidation, but whatever you have, you're going to have to deal with sludge on a daily basis yeah. now. So you're going to have storage and um, so that creates other costs that you're going to have to deal with and the equipment for that to do that is pretty expensive and um, there used to be grant money it used to get 50 cents on the dollar so it made it kind of attractive from a return on investment but i mean it you could phase the project i guess is one way to put it too is you may focus on the liquid stream you know and do something on the solids and wait on that down the road you know when it becomes more cost effective because there's a there's a tipping point where it, it may make sense to haul it somewhere else and have mm -hmm. it dewatered okay, and disposed yeah. of and are mm -hmm. these just like big filter presses yeah they mm -hmm. are yeah, yeah screw presses like centrifuges yeah, yeah that's right like yeah in a, but you got a batch system it's just yeah, a continuous that's press right, system yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And then, and with, but you got to get up to a certain size where it makes sense to mm -hmm. purchase right. that equipment and operate it and then you're still hauling the dewater the cake out, so that's right. something you got to look at. At, at. at our size, I think we'd most we'd be better served probably to to buy a truck and haul it and have someone else de dewater. Use it. someone yeah. nearby that. Yeah, like Burlington yeah. or somebody. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean that that you know we're we're much smaller than Winooski, and even Winooski we we did very well uh, fiscally by hauling versus yeah. versus dewatering. We got a pipeline that goes to Colchester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's. Good idea. Just a thought. <laughs> there are safety violations. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Sorry. That was just a joke. All right. But you know, there maybe there's some that whole might other way that we can yeah, that, deal that, with that. That may be the interim. Right, we might yep. you might do that for a while. I mean, they'd hate to be hauling a truck every day or two trucks a day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. More. You do it once a week. You okay. do a couple loads. You know, two. This size plane, you probably do two, three loads one day a week. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, one thing that's interesting, which Eric was talking to me about, is, um, you know, it's it's the water usage is trending is trending downward. Yeah. Um, so where is it? We were all sitting here in a lot of cases seven or eight or ten years ago. People are thinking they're going to need more treatment capacity. Even in Williston, like, you know, I've worked in Williston for years and all the growth is occurring in the high service area and their water usage is, is flattened out. In fact, it's trending downward. I mean, I've got some of these smaller... Low flow toilets. It is, yeah. I mean, smaller households, it's a whole bunch of, it's a whole bunch of yeah. things. So, you know... Um, it's better managing kind of what you have. It's a good. It's a good thing, you know. But it lets you size things kind of more appropriately for what you well, need that's now. Good. And I mean, you forward. save that's right. energy and that's exactly save. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, all the way around. Yeah. But the phosphorus load doesn't necessarily that's go right. down. The pounds, that's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. The yeah. concentration goes up. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. The pounds are still there. But that was that was the really alarming thing that I found when I did all the calculations of what our actual water usage was by looking at a year's or you know six yeah. eighteen months of uh, water uh, bills and then looking at what the month the gallons per day that was coming into the sewage plant yeah. was it was you know just the opposite of what you would Dis think disconnected the disconnect yeah, yeah. so yeah. so it just seems like the trying to address the infiltration thing mm -hmm. is critical because we may not have a as big a problem as we thought how, how much phosphorus comes in from inf infiltration no, most not very, much. very little and, and actually a lot of our problem is we have infiltration but we have more inflow than infiltration so infiltration is stuff coming through joints and pipes, yeah, through manholes, water over the stuff top like that. Kind of ground, stuff. Ground Inflow is what you know, people's sump pumps, roof drains, all that stuff. Well, uh, we don't know of, really what the problem is. Right. Uh, well, there's. I mean, we haven't done. I mean, unless right. you know and you've done a survey, that's right. to me. We, we that's have the, we have both the information that we need. We have, we have both, but due to. You know the difference in how they work. Um, you know, inflow is flashier than infiltration. Mm -hmm. Right. 
you know. But I think what I'm and, getting at is, though, is we need some accurate information right. about, okay, how many Absolutely. sump pumps do we have yeah. that are right. doing and that? Both of those, no matter right. which one yeah. it is. Right. Um, I mean, we wouldn't want to ignore that in right. this study. We'd want to put that out there and right. say, what can we gain? What's it going to cost? And what can we gain from it? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. Then, I mean, and then you can make a decision at that point where you where you need to spend the money. Yeah. yeah. And the, and that will help with our overall gallons per day. It's not going to have much effect on our pounds of phosphorus. Yeah. Though. So right. the design of right. the system yeah. is right. Yeah. It's not going to allow us to continue the batch system we have. Right. The lagoon. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so it would be good, Wayne and Eric, to give us like a one-page thing. It would be good for me anyways. It sort of says, here are the deadlines, you know, and maybe a course of action. And I think we need to come up with uh, a team that's going to work on this. So then the first thing is to do this RFQ. Right. 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 And I mean, Yes, like, Alex? Uh, yeah, I was just going to suggest that the, the team idea is great, but it's way too early for that. I think Andrea is right. You need the RFQ first. You need to get the consultant on board. And once you have them, then you introduce them to a subcommittee who's going to work with them. But mm -hmm. just just doing the heavy lifting to get somebody on board and get them hired and get the scope of work and all that yeah. done, especially given these time horizons. We're, yeah. we're in May. This thing's yeah. due in February. I mean, we, we need to jump on this. I would just I wouldn't worry so much about the setting up yep. the committee as I would getting that RFQ mm -hmm. out the door and knowing how you're going to pay for it because Wayne you said there's a 50% loan subsidy, what does that mean? Does that mean that the that the, we can take a loan to pay for the design no. work and they'll and they'll subsidize half the cost or does that mean so you do a planning loan through them and it just say say for example this phase of work is fifty thousand the engineering you still mm -hmm. apply for a loan of fifty thousand and as you move through. Um, at some point in repayment, you only have to pay half half of that back. So it's processed as the full loan. Yeah. So new, new, yeah. new things instead of grants are doing yeah. loan forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of administration that needs to go ahead of even getting a consultant on board. Do we have to get this loan to begin with? We don't. Yeah. We don't have the money, Eric, well, right, well, to pay yeah, for it out of pocket. So typically, though, it's a pretty simple. I mean, and this isn't anything I've helped a lot it's just very simple it's like a one pager so it's a matter of the town putting this in the newspaper putting it up on the website um, you're going to put it out there for three or four weeks you're going to get the um, SOQs from the consultants in four weeks that point is probably good to create some kind of a subcommittee to say who or who's part of that review process and but part don't of the, we need to apply for the loan yeah first? you know because you need to really know what the dollar amount with the scope of work and the okay. consultant before you can do that so you're going to pick the consultant you're going to put together a scope of work and a draft state kind of has to buy into the scope and the town does and that way you kind of know the number then you apply for the loan exactly and that's right then they can start work and well generally what we're doing is we're probably the minute the engineering services agreement is pretty much blessed by everybody at that point, you can really start the work because it takes you, you know, the, the application is pretty straightforward, but that's got to come in from the select board. It's going to take the state a couple months to get it processed, and it's really there for reimbursements. The, pur the purpose of that program is that you may not have $50,000 parked in your sewer budget for that. So what you're going to do is you're just going to draw it down on that as you incur the expenses on a monthly basis through the project. So if the loan's not approved for a couple of months, it's not a big deal, but you can work that through just to kind of accelerate. Because you're right, otherwise, if you waited for that whole thing to happen, you're going to be sitting here, it's going to be in October before you start any work on it. So. Um, yeah, and that's just kind of way to expedite it, so, yeah. We but. should know, though, really what's in our budget. Mm -hmm. in the yeah, budget. we'll know in the next right. yeah. couple of weeks. Right, because we're, we're going to yeah. close look at it. Yeah. We must have yeah. some Absolutely. in there for yeah. We, yeah, we've got some, we've got some fund balance and yep. to preserve. Yeah. But so yeah. that, we do. That's, that's a choice. I mean, you, you can fund that yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, if you do that, though, you're not going to qualify. No, I think we right. want no, to, no, but no, I, yeah. I don't think, it's, I, I don't oh, think okay, we have right. a matter of cash right. flow problem, oh, no, which okay. I think okay, is sure. what okay. Okay. Alex was... We've got a solid base. Yeah, yeah. We can we can float the money. Right. Yes. Yeah. We have it parked in their budget, and they say, "I want to move this along faster, so I don't want to go through that process." No, we like free money. Yeah. Yeah. It's not free money. We just we like yeah. We like money that's funded by the big we versus the small we. So I'm 
you know, unless somebody else wants to sort of um, work on this, I'm happy to, to do it. I mean, I've got some experience in wastewater treatment, so okay. kind of have an idea on it a little bit, and uh, certainly we have some good uh, support to move it forward. So maybe um, we'll set up some times to get together and you know, so discuss little, the next day, couple I'll be actions. I'll to help you with that, so it's going to get into a little bit of an awkward spot. Yes, because I, I can help you prepare. It's just a one-pager, but at that yep. point, you're going to be going out to solicitations right. and, and would, go through the process. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so maybe in the next couple of weeks, we can... Yeah. Set up a time, sure. yeah. bring in the town administrator if you yeah. want, and uh, if anybody else wants to, you know, sit in on what the next couple steps are sure. to get yeah. this moving. Yeah. Yep. All right. Good. Okay. Thank you very much, Good. Wayne. Good. Thanks, Eric. Wayne. Thank you. Oh, you guys yeah. stick for both oh, the next you. one. Water. You are. Yeah. Just, I'll listen in the water. You know, you'd think you'd do water first and then waste water, <laughs> but no, we got to do, no, it, backwards do it backwards here. So clean go, water. go back yeah. to the flow. Go backwards, go flow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, next yeah, item is just uh, an update on the water mm -hmm. infrastructure. Yep. Um, so, yep. So, Wayne stole my thunder a little bit there. That's okay. On this one, <laughs> the uh, so good news um, after all the wrangling and hair pulling over the last year, and you know, searching. You know, leaks high and low. Um, we're in really good shape, as far as as far as we are. the The water use in March of 2018 was 51 percent of that of March of 2017. Wow. Our our water use is down. Oh, lower than five to six years ago. Even in, if you you know. That takes into account the fact that we have all this growth that we've had in the f past five or six years. We still have a slightly lower use than, you know, five years ago. So And now we have filtrate, too, that we have to make up for, too. From right, I'm just talking about the actual gallons. Amount you're pumping. Right, the amount, the amount the, the, yeah. the town is actually so using. So that's, yeah. That we're yeah. pumping. That we're right. pumping. So, right. yeah, and so right. a portion of what we're pumping today gets bypassed. In no, the, the 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 meter is what goes to the town. Okay, gotcha. Yep. The meter yep. is what goes actually to the town. So on that meter, we're in better shape than we were five years ago, which means that we've probably fixed, you know, well, I, we we fixed at least one good leak that has been going for ten years, and we're, the system's pretty tight. Um, so is it perfect system? No, it's old. It's got problems. Um, it's well. It's very. It's a varying age. There's some. Some that's pretty old. Some that's newer that has you know valves with issues. Um, and it's the new places that had some of the big leaks too. Well, yeah. <laughs> do, do, do those do those uh, bolts that were improper for the valves? Do we think so? We know we have you know at any particular year more leaks can happen. We know that right because of heaving and whatnot. But I think Is it fair enough to say though we would notice? Leakage. Oh, you know. we're at a point now that I can I can tell you when a small leak pops up, just because I've got with a new system and how it tracks. You know, it's the the um, electronic system we put in when our Piet reservoir thing mm -hmm. got hit. Mm -hmm. I can I can I can actually see on the chart when it happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty good. But it doesn't tell you where. Don't tell me where. Right. It's, so, I mean, that's, I, it, that's, it just hey, it's time to go look for right. me. But yeah. that's, there it is. That's yeah. something we talked about is, you know, putting in valves. Right. And, yes. and ways, you know, a couple of right. places where nice. you could, if you do see a leak, you can start to say, I know it's in this area of mm -hmm. town. And at least because before we, right. we, we didn't have any of that. And so that segues into my, my plan for what should be next. Um, that has that's one of the mig, major reasons for it, and what we should do next is we we don't have we we've yeah we really don't have a good map or a good inventory of any of it, and we don't <coughs> do any kind of a asset management 
and we can roll all that into one, you know, one basic product that's extremely usable. And we can do it. Well, I was going to say before I found out funding source, I would say we could do it pretty reasonably. But now we can do it for very little money if we get our application in fairly quickly. So there's there's a um, asset, man it's, it's another thing, it's not a grant, it's a loan, it's 80% loan forgiveness of for asset management, you know, loan from the state. And Is that the thing that got put in our Dropbox today? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And um, John and I both are in the middle of a, we're in the middle of an asset management class being put on by the University of New Mexico through through the uh, the state of Vermont, and funny thing is that it actually is the their their program that this loan is 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 actually based around this the the stuff they're teaching in this class. So that kind of turned out to be fairly lucky. So that's you know that's that's the direction we're headed. We're gonna. So um, are you gonna you know? come to us is this going to be part of your budget going forward for yep. next year and incorporated in the budget the the next meeting which i'm on for i'm going mm -hmm. to bring the um application for this loan to be signed because it's i mean there are two left for this year and i want to be one of them and it, it's so instead of just doing buying the the stuff i had in your box for friday of just the software and the hardware. We so didn't see that. You didn't see that? Did Renee not put that in? No. Renee was, yeah, I gave it to yeah. Renee for, I so thought, we she, I thought she dropped it Friday. Yeah. I thought she might have too. I didn't see it. Yep. Yeah. No. So basically there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a software program that does, it's almost like ArcGIS light and a whole lot more user friendly, um, kind of wrapped with asset management that uh, it's $25 a month and it's very, a very uh um it's a big suite that is very easy to use include you know gis and asset management and reporting all all wrapped into one it's highly <clears throat> it's highly recommended by the university of new mexico engineering program that put on the the course what, what is it you're talking about? it's what called it? fulcrum mapping so this it's, is this is so you know what's in the ground and you're able to like inventory and keep track of it. Is that this what? This is yeah. It's 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 inventorying, um, it's GIS, it's report generation. It's you know, you can do everything from take pictures of leaks of breaks and put it into the program. You can even put a video of you know saying hey, see these two valves, don't turn that one, turn this one. And if someone goes onto the map and says, hey, what's that? Before they go and touch something, oh, Eric says, don't touch that one. You know, there's all so kinds it's a, of... a management tool. Right. Of which there's okay. nothing like that. We don't have currently. anything like that. We don't that. have anything like right. that. Right. We, right. We, right. When we have some, we have something break, we, yeah. we dig between, you know, Here this and drawing and that map and this on the computer yeah. and hope for the best. Yeah. So with, with the fact that we can get the... Um, basically, we'll call it a grant with the in-kind match. So there's an initial cost, then it's but we'd, and then a we'd monthly rather, cost. instead of just you know, that was this cost, but yeah. with the grant, we could actually get, you know, help with the town engineer to actually help set this up. So we'll want to get that information as soon as we can. Absolutely, and, uh, and Tyler and I are working if you on need, it. You know, a fast oh, decision. Yeah, on it. Tyler and I are working on it very actively. We'll, we'll I actually have. I hope to have it well before your ne your next meeting. So, and the next meeting will be Two introducing uh, the budget, right? Um, because by the following meeting, we'll need to vote on it. Yep. So it would be good to get that information to Isn't us it too. June, June something. I think it's the. It's it, yes, yeah, due before the end of the year fiscal. Yeah. So it's good to hear that the leakage is, well, seems to be under control. Well, that's great. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's I would encourage us to... to Just drop uh, my power bill by 20000 a year. 
just yeah, just that one that one thing. Of course, there's less chemical. There's less everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, is that all you had? Was the well? That's very good news. That's not all. Yeah. Um, and so, then you know, you're, so, yeah, it was our base of, you know. And now you're saying you've got you know you're also looking at the ways to maintain the water system. Right. And here's a tool you've been introduced to that could certainly help do, do it, that. Help a lot. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it would have to be populated with a lot of information. Oh yeah, it's going to gonna take, gonna take a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. And part of that's actually part of this class is, uh, you know, they, the homework was like, okay, what is the block of time you're going to put into this? Right to, to you know, set it up. To, yeah, for your mapping, you 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 can't say, well, we'll map when we have time. No, you have to say, this is the time you're mapping. Yeah. So if you had this tomorrow and it was ready to go, how long would it take to set this up? You're, this is what you're saying. It depends on how much time you want to put into it. Well, is that what you're saying, it, this kind of product will never be finished. It'll always be refining. But yeah, to get but the asking, basic set up. How, how long before you're using it? Um, or are you using it first day? We'd be using it to a limited point, a limited amount pretty quickly. But it, it would just continue to get better, yeah. you know, as you go. Because you'd never, you'd never stop, you know, putting inputs in it. Yeah. You know, I mean, every time something happened in the system, so you, you, you would log it, it in the system, right. mm -hmm. you know. Every every break, every you know, every time you open the ground, you, you, or not even that. Every time you exercise valves, you that's part of the maintenance that's logged into the system. Mm -hmm. You know. What did you call right. this? The, the it's, uh, it's called it's fulcrum mapping. If you fulcrum, just, if you if you look map. into fulcrum right. mapping, um, if you go, just Google fulcrum map, you'll find the. the I can also resend. Yeah, resend it. I have. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I mean, this is. There's probably other ones like it. There too, are other I'm ones. Sure. Yeah. And so. I, I'm just. You know, and there are there are a lot. There are, and there's a wide variety of costs and and um, I'm basically the uh, the outfit at the you know asset management program in the, at the University of New Mexico. You know there there's a lot of sharp minds there, and I'm basically using their years of experience in 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 whittling down and, to what works best for our field as. And you said Tom has been involved in this too. Tom. Yeah. Tyler. Tyler. Oh, Tyler. Tyler. Tyler yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Tyler and I are going to put together a, a program to, to, you know, okay. apply for this quote unquote grant and All right. take it forward. Um, what's the story if we're done with this? Mm -hmm. um, on the well that was drilled by Black Rock and the testing. What's the status on that? Testing is uh, testing came back great. Um, now we've just got um, permitting to do with with uh, the hydrogeologist and um, paying for it. Has it been made bigger? Or did it have to be a bigger? Has, had, no, it has we have to get through the permitting process before that happens? Before we can do that. Okay. Right, and that's, um, yeah. Do we need it? Good question. We're down fifty-one percent from five years ago. I'm told. <laughs> right. I mean, right now we are. It depends on the. It, it, it. That's up to you. Basically, I mean, do we need it to meet our current demands and in, in a very small amount of growth? No. Do we need it to do the town plan and or whatever the you know, the stuff that's on the books, absolutely. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, somewhat that's dependent on what our, it still comes back to our wastewater, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we're still, we st what we're design we haven't really decided what we're designing a wastewater system right. for. I mean, the, the wastewater, you know, currently, as far as flow is concerned, you know, handles quite a bit more than we can have in water right now, but it wouldn't handle all of that for sure. And it's not currently handling, I mean, in February it didn't handle, you know, what we have, you know, we, we, we actually violated the current permit in February for phosphorus. I so, asked you that question when we started, did we violate the permit? Like, was, so I think, and I would like to say this, if we violate a permit in this town, I'd like the no. select board to know that happened. Okay. That's yeah. happened, I think, a year and a half ago, and we didn't yeah. find out till this later. Was, this was we a, had to fill in some paperwork. And, yeah, this and, is a minor one that they didn't have any. There was no, you know, 
there was no repercussions. It was just explain why it happened, which was spring, uh, normal spring turnover uh, for a, normal spring you know turnover for a lagoon. You know, it was a, it was it wasn't like the it wasn't yeah anywhere near the scope of the 2014 when you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, this but is I think that that, a very you know, minor, minor. Let's say, let's say that's our unwritten policy at this point, that okay. we find out about that. Yeah. yeah, this wasn't one of those. It was just okay. a... Yeah. So what you're saying is with our existing well capacity, and if we were to bring on, which we don't know what the capacity of right. the Black Rock would be, right. but if we brought that on at its minimal which I forget what it was, 130 gallons, uh, I don't know what it was. If we brought that on at, at the minimal, mm -hmm. are you, would the wastewater treatment plant take that capacity? I would say on the top of my head it would. I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, if you brought it, yeah, I mean, if, if you ran both of them at full bore, no. But if you ran them... At, at a comfortable at amount. At the permitted level. Right. It, it would handle, yeah. It would handle it running at a comfortable, you know, amount per day. If you if you really stretched it, no way. Well, we, cannot, we can't stretch right. it. There's a permit limit. Right. So well, if we ran it at the permit limit. Well, the permit limit's higher than I'd like to run it. Okay. You know. Yep. So, but, the, but the permit right. limit's the permit limit. So the question would be, and maybe you don't at, know it on at, the top if, of your head. If we were to double what we have now... Permit limit, we couldn't handle the wastewater. But but BlackRock wouldn't double what we have now. It would, you know, it would, it would an extra forty percent basically. Well, I didn't think it was that much, at the minimal. So it has to reach a certain minimal amount. Well, the minimal amount that it, it would be dependent on another well. The minimal amount to run that would be dependent on finding a second well. We're, the minimal, we're not yeah. talking about a second well. Right, but the middle, talking right. about Black Rock. If we brought Black Rock in at so its minimal, we can't bring it in with our that, wells. Right, we can't bring it in without a, a 200 gallons a minute total between the two, because you can't run a train for less than that. So that's to adding, actually adding an additional train. Right. So could and we add we, the additional train and be within our wastewater? It, no, we, no, we ran them both at, at full permit, which you wouldn't want to run at full permit anyway. So we think we have a lot of questions we have to ask. So, mm -hmm. And this is the information we're looking for you to give to us. Okay. I think the other problem that we run is that the state hasn't changed what you need to permit for um, the, you know, gallons per day. Um, for a house, even though we know that we're each house is using way less. Right. So in terms of, of um, phasing, we can probably, you know, if we were going to determine a phasing policy for new development, we wouldn't really be limited by our capacity, but we would be limited of what is actually being right. used. Right. If you phase it. You... And is there any indication of when the state may be changing that permit? I haven't heard any, okay. yeah, I haven't heard any indication they were going to change the numbers. Oh, but, I but thought somebody can, had said we that. We can yeah. work around it too. Yeah. We can yeah. right. phase in some and then right. say Once here's the on, capacity that they have, and then right. after a period, a year Every or year. something, we yeah. could say, oh, here's the actual capacity, and right. then we free up right. more of our own water right. capacity. Right. 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 So that's that's I think what I want to be sure that we're we're knowing what our real usage is and not worrying about what the the state the tells, state you. tells us although right. we have to do that up front the, up front and right. it will limit the ability of a developer to put in very many right. houses a year right. yeah yeah right and we'd be squeezing the lemon yeah. as we go yeah mm -hmm. it's true all right okay. so the next meeting we'll start talking about the budget yep okay and then Absolutely. this potential grant yeah, we call yeah. it a grant. That sounds forgiveness, but yeah. it's easier to say. No, that sounds good. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. a decent yeah. tool. So it does Absolutely. sound like there's a deadline of June 30th. Oh, yeah, and we, I want to okay. okay. do it well before then. Okay. So we'll just... have three meetings before then. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it'll be good to get a good introduction. We'll have enough time to review okay. both budgets yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And then... Uh, and I'll try to get this grant application to you before the, before the next meeting so we can actually 
get it signed at the next meeting because it's not just the June 30th deadline that we're working against. We're working against the fact that they only are doing five before June 30th and they've already done three. So yeah. once the other two are done, it's the money's gone. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. Alex. Eric, can I just ask you, the, on the water side, with, with the well, the Blackrock well, mm -hmm. so we have an agreement with them that says mm -hmm. if it meets this test, we'll develop it. And if it meets, if it doesn't meet this test, but it meets this lower bar, we'll look for another well to, to add to it, and then we'll develop right. both. But but we're not going. But we have to go through a permitting phase before we can determine know what those those yields actually are, we right? Do. So when do you think we'll know? Like, how long do you think we'll be in the permitting phase, and when will we actually be able to test those yields and say? The Black Rock well was this much, and we're. I'm, I'm really hoping, you know, midsummer, the latest. I want to get this, you know, trying to push them through that and so we can drill. Okay, so like August ish? Yeah, 1st August. I'm hoping that that well's flowing hard by 1st August. And then the. And then the test of the yield happens immediately once it's drilled, or does it right. take another two it or three months to... A few weeks, probably, to, okay. to do the full test. So Would that include a drawdown test? Right. You have to test it and test the surrounding wells at the mm -hmm. same time. So potentially the fall, we might know if that well... The one that Blackrock is drilling is, a, is, is one that water. could be developed, right. or whether we have to go find more water first. Yeah, any amount of luck. Okay. It's just helpful for us mm -hmm. to know with their review process. And, right. And we initially, we had thought it was going to be sooner, but then right. I didn't realize they had to go through a, a pre-permitting phase mm -hmm. to just know whether the well had a appropriate yield. And the testing on the water is? The water quality testing is good. That's already been done. How long has that been done? That was... I want to say it was late February. I've been asking that question at this meeting, every meeting. When, when's the water getting tested? Hmm. And I was told, we didn't know yet. Is so that the from the existing well, and are they going to drill a new one? They're going to drill further. To we'll, have to, we'll have to do it again, but yeah, this was just a, are, they'll, they'll this, drill this was a course. preliminary test just to make right. sure we're not... And that's good. You know, it's not a fool's errand, right. right? Yeah, good. Right. That is good news. I wasn't aware that you weren't in, that yeah. information wasn't forwarded. It was, and it was more curiosity than anything. How did we do? Because I thought mm -hmm. BlackRock was, you know, hoping to get that done quick so they mm -hmm. could maybe move forward. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Well, just uh, this is a question for us, I guess, is thinking about, uh, you know, what has <clears throat> held us up uh, in terms of, I think, uh, the development has been not having the water capacity, right? Um, and now we're faced with knowing that within, you know, five years we're going to need to be spending 8 to $10 million. Um, and are we going to continue to um, make sewer allocations as we're moving forward with this? Uh, um, because people are going to have the water now, so they're going to, you know, and we do have capa sewer capacity um, on the books anyway, even though we're violating our permit sometimes. Um, you know, does it make sense to allow all, I mean, I, I, we, I think I would like to say just us thinking about that, how those two things are meshing with each other of, of um, you know, what our ultimate capacity is going to need to be and if we're incrementally allowing projects to move forward, with their anticipation of being able to do a full build out, and yet we come to the conclusion that we can't, you know, what can we afford right. 
seems like there's there's some questions there about that we'll that will certainly be part of the scope of work I think when we um, go forward with the wastewater so and, and whether what's the funding as you get a permit and you put right uh, what's the right term the, uh, the allocation term? allocation yeah allocation yeah. and so maybe we're going to need is that some the right amount yeah right. we're going to need to change that I think or we, we want to look yeah. at it for sure right. Right. Yeah. to, yeah. to that's, afford that's this we also need to try to you know twist our book our, our accounting or whatever to make sure that the allocation monies get set against just you know growth you know against upgrades yeah and that's where that needs to go and right it's, it's yeah. not clear it's not where well. it is right now yeah you know it's not clear where it's where it's being put there's you know so i'd like we need to somehow find its own its own spot that it gets well, to. Well, I would think it's going to its own spot. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I think, a matter of knowing that, that I mean. But ma now we can define exactly what, we, we will know exactly what it's going to. Are you suggesting right. that we're using that allocation money for we're operating not, costs? I don't, I, no, but it's just not clear the way, you know, the, way the books are, that, where it is. I mean, it's in the fund, it goes in the fund balance. Uh-huh. But it would be, I'd like to, I'm going to try to. Get with but wouldn't we just know that number by tallying up how much was collected? How much, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I would well, think well, we're well, okay. I, I would be, I think, really good to um, outline what all these questions are so that we can really begin to, to um, have answers and be very clear about which money is in what, what fund. I would, I would think, yeah. Uh, so a written explanation of everything and a written um, identification of the questions would be helpful, I think. I mean, I would, I would guess our auditors have those buckets correct. And, but now we can further define mm -hmm. where we're going and exactly what it would be applied to. And that might tell us that they might need adjustment. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, What's with these lights? Uh, yeah, I don't know. That one there. We can address that. I think they got new. Yeah. Well, yes. I hope not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are different. A few colors. months ago, but I, they they weren't. This is a new flickering. I've not seen this flickering. I thought it was just since Mike walked into the room that the lights have started to... He is really powerful, <laughs> but I'm not sure he's that powerful. Step up. Our next next item is to talk about a, a highway garage, They're the new watching. highway garage. He's probably and, watching you. Mm. Are those microphones? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're... I don't know. Mics, right? Yeah. So this is... Um, discussion about maybe upgrading the lift that was planned in the new highway in the garage. New highway garage yep. right. No, yeah. You want these out first? Sure. Okay. We didn't do the other ones. No, but I didn't know if you really wanted to start. Because you gave them all to me. <laughs> I think Thanks, th Mike. things are looking up, huh? <laughs> oh, you are funny. Those are the, these are the ones we had planned to buy, that we budgeted to buy. So Best Buy was planned in the <laughs> highway garage. Two years ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, these, they've gone up minimally. Um, there was a price increase on them anyways, but in looking into these over time, um, these are the bare minimum lifts. Um, the other lifts we looked into, um, they have the capability of lifting a truck with a wing on it, not having to remove the wing. They're all accessories that go on these. Um, and in looking at them, the Best Buy lifts, the, the rail that picks the truck up on each one of them is only 15 inches long. These other ones, there's 17 on the front and 22 on the back, so they'll grab both back wheels instead of just being on one wheel. 
they can lift the truck up bumper to bumper and just lift a lot more truck. So more capacity. More capacity. Maybe, maneuverability. Safe, maybe safer because of that. Safer. My biggest thing is is the is the being able to pick them up at the wing. Because with the other ones, you can't do that. And what I'm afraid of, down the road, long after I'm gone, somebody's going to say, hey, why don't we just build something to add on to these so we can do that? And I really don't think that's yeah. going to be very safe. Well, what, and, you're leaving? <laughs> yes. And and I imagine in the middle of the winter, you got the it wing would be, on yep, and something's and wrong and you want to get it up and take a look at it. Right. And the only reason I'm asking this is because we have the contingency money's left. I think we're at 130. I'm going to confirm that that we're i'm not adding anything else to that building um so we have the extra money that was from the building because it ends up being adding another 43 44 thousand dollars to purchase these so um it's, it's these were that 20, much more yes yeah so another 50 basically yeah. yep i mean the 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 Best Buy ones will do it. It just, I'm afraid down the future. And then the whole sales, one of the sales pitches on the new garage, we were going to become a, eventually a maintenance facility for all the town equipment and everything. And, you know, we're looking down the road. I um, don't want to we're say when. Can't lift them. But, right. <laughs> what good is it if you can't lift them? Are we going to come back and ask for another $60,000 to buy them outright and have these smaller ones sitting around? You know, these won't lift the louder truck in the future. Well, I'm not. I'm, I don't know. We're gonna get a lot. Yeah, we're right. not saying we're getting a lot of truck. I'm not saying that either. And just yeah. it's been talked about for a while. But the future, who knows? And I mean, do you think it's uh, it is realistic to think about us doing the maintenance um, on? I mean, you do routine maintenance already with the existing lift that you have in the garage. We don't have a lift. You don't have a we lift just have at a all. Crane. We have the overhead crane, the hoist. Okay. All right. So yeah. you just crawl around underneath there. Yeah. And you change. I made him change his yeah, pants. Yeah. Change today. out of all my clothes. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I mean, I guess I'm worried. I I'm, I am concerned about the the safety of just having things up on a lift in general. Well, with and these, there's we would add the jack stands with okay. it. Okay. Well, I, I guess should we check with our um. Uh, liability insurance and make sure what you know if this garage is equipped with that what it does to our insurance knowing that we're doing this kind of work I, I you know I'm just concerned yeah. that that's a good that, question yeah I mean we see need, that's we my concern about. is like if somebody in the future decides the ones that we were gonna buy modify those yeah not that's good not good yeah you know yeah. so I just feel like we're right. going down this road, um, you know, thinking, well, this is a good thing for us to do, to be able to do this maintenance. But if it's going to, like, jack up our insurance rates so mm -hmm. much, maybe it, it doesn't make sense. I, I don't know. I just... Good question. Good question, yeah. I don't see how. All right. Yep. Okay. We're, we, we don't have to make this decision tomorrow at the highway garage meeting, do we? No. It's okay. a decision for the board to make tonight. Well, I'm, you know, I'm sort of thinking. So we think we have um, a leftover. We're going to have the, some contingency left over, but do we we don't know that for sure. We could run into something now. Something or, major. Yeah. I mean, I think the committee would have to, you know, inform us that yes. I mean, you're telling us, but yes, here's we're pretty confident we've got this, uh, you know, capacity excess. Yes. Yeah. It's not that excess. Is, yeah. That would be good to know. Um, but when would a decision be needed to, you know, place the order and get this into the? They're looking design. eight to two, ten weeks out when we order. And you're just looking to buy one of them for one bay, correct? Or what? They move their port. They're mobile. They move around. Oh, you move them down yeah. near the base, yeah. yeah. But there is one bay that's set up for it's maintenance. Set up for yeah. maintenance right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. these yeah. are not. They're not mounted in the in the floor or no, anything. No. Yeah. You can move them around. Put them in any bay to work on a truck outside. Uh -huh. In the wash bay, they're waterproof. Uh -huh. And why wouldn't we go with like some kind of uh, system that's built into? That's like... an insurance liability. Oh, 
I think Jeff had told us that at one What's of our meetings. What's the difference? Because it's in the ground. I have no idea. Huh, okay. Maybe, maybe they're harder to maintain, you know, to... You can't uh, see what's going yeah. on. Oh, in terms of yeah. leaks in the hydraulics yeah. and stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It seems so. There was something, I think okay. Jeff Thies from the league had told us. Okay. If we were going to go with lifts, do the portable ones, mobile ones, not one in the ground. Okay. And then the other reason is, then you're limited. Right. Yeah. You don't have the flexibility. Right. right. Yeah. right. We have a yeah. truck breaks down in a bay, at least with these, we can move them over and pick the truck up there if we need to. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, you know, I, um, I, part of the town garage and upgrading it, in my mind, I'm saying there is this opportunity where we could, mm -hmm. you know, hire a future person or somebody that we yeah. already have who has the ability to do more work. We could be bringing in, you know, some other town vehicles and doing even just the basic work. Yeah. Um, just the routine maintenance. Right. I think, you know, Frank had talked to me about that several times about yeah. doing, doing the routine maintenance on him. And yeah. Or, we we or, did the fire departments for a while and then it just got, that was out of control. Yeah. And Not out of control. It just it, it changed the whole thing. Or, so. or possibly, you know, hiring somebody who that's what they do, mm -hmm. and they, it may not be a full time job necessarily, but you know they're they're just maintaining things, are, and you've got the equipment. So, so job? yeah, <laughs> so I'm I, <laughs> twenty two hours all, a week. I'm all right with this, and I think you know I, I would want to just be reassured we in fact have the funds to do it, and then. By you coming here saying, here's what, you know, what we, what would be a good thing. You're advising us. This is what I, that the team, the department needs. I mean, we're, we're first saying, look, we got some extra money. And then you're making this is, the, if you had some extra money, this is where you would put it. Yeah, we've had a few change orders since the beginning. But, um, you know, Steve did prepare a, um, a project update, and so there certainly is, and it's not like we're, I mean, we're just upgrading what was originally right. planned. Right. So in that sense, it makes sense. Um, and it sure, it sure seems like there's money in the budget for it. So. Have you seen these lifts in operation at some mm -hmm. garage? The Shelburne has an older set. Okay. We've just gone and look at a set at Rick's Towing. And then, of course, this, the ones down in Starksboro, they have the ideal ones. Oh, so. okay. But the, the ideal ones, the ones that you want to get? No. Is ideal a brand? Or? That's these, the one yeah. I'm from Best Buy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, ideal, yeah. Okay. That's made in, not made in China. Mm. Oh, that's the nice. ideal. <laughs> The Mohawks are American built. Mm. Okay. Um, so thoughts? I mean, what we prefer to do, what the board has been preferring to do, is get the information, and then on the following meeting, you know, make a vote. And so this will give the committee a chance to sort of weigh in. It would be good. I mean, your opinion's important, but it, you know, if the committee sort of said, "Yeah, we're feeling pretty good," that would be. That would reassure me that. I don't know. Maybe you brought sense. it up at last week's meeting on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, okay. So. I will tomorrow morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah. First item on the agenda. And that'll still be all right schedule wise. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and the I other. Met with Steve so Friday. You saying a month and a half, two months before we can get in there. Okay. Um, so while we got you here, how's it going? Great. Next year, Green Up Day be inside the gate. Oh, yeah. Oh, how did it go but, last Saturday? Not so well? Well, it wasn't just Saturday. It was all the other ones the nights before. 300 tires. Apparently, I'm not taking advantage of our eye exams because I have not seen 300 tires on the side of the road. Hmm. They were placed there Friday night. Thursday night, Friday night. Apparently, there was a truckload in Heinsberg Hollow Saturday at some time. Hmm. Well, that's good, though. They're out of there. Well, they weren't there. Right. Before. No, I, I, yeah. I get what you're saying, but... It's not spring cleaning. They've been dealt with. It's roadside cleanup, and I think it oh. needs the... We got a lot of wind Friday night. <laughs> yeah. It's all those sheds that blew over and blew but, over. But overall, all yeah. the trash that was collected... The trash, it, it was to be pretty five good. and a half tons of yeah. trash. It seemed to be trash, pretty good miles. roadside stuff. I yeah. mean, there were a lot of people collecting, yeah. and a lot of the roads, they look a lot better. A lot better. Yeah. 
And thank you to your team. Yeah. That's a little thank you card for your team for helping us do it. I think yeah. putting it outside the gate, did you get any extra stuff put in there? Did you notice? I was like, boy, oh, that's yeah, a... Yeah, the, the tires. Was <laughs> tires and the play sets. Oh, okay. Places, yeah. Oil. Oil. Yeah, oil. yeah I saw oils. that. Yeah. There was a little. So when it's inside, I think it's a little more controlled. It's a little more controlled. Yeah. I don't think. The, yeah. Was there, I, was there people at the, at the? Oh, it was. It happened at night when nobody yeah. was there. There was nobody there. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. Because it was out in the old pit. So yeah. I think you know next year I think we'll still put it on the ground. Yeah, that we'll seems pick it up. much that, safer. That worked, yeah. yeah, it was safer, but I think behind a lot gate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. But thanks. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty successful, yeah. I thought. Yeah. And, and how was Friday night for you guys? Friday night, we did a lot of running around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we got. I got just any, under two inches of rain in my house. Any wow. significant damage? The only one we had, we went Sherman Hollow. Yeah, I was down there. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. What, what that happened to Sherman Hollow? Just water some of it. Out. Just the water. Most of the dishes were over full. And it culvert just, wash out culvert, just, the culvert, no, the road washed out. Road washed Because it jumped the culverts. Got it. Where did the so, road wash out? Up by the old tire button place. Oh, really? Up around the sharp corner. Oh. Because the water comes down and can't get around that ledge. So we have to figure something out there. And it, those two two foot culverts couldn't take it. Mm. So it was over the road, washed that out. And then Palmer Road, Sherman, Sherman Hollow intersection washed some. Oh. But a lot of water quick. I know, another inch would have just killed it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Did you have to struggle with trees over roads here? Like no, I only had Shelburne? one tree down, and that was in Sherman Hollow. Yeah. yeah. I know and I stopped cutting Shelburne it. Today. Shelburne was bad. Shelburne was bad. And it's funny, we went to Williston with the tires, and we went Oak Hill Road, one load. And if you go up from Lake Iroquois north on Oak Hill Road, all the speed limit signs are blown over. Wow. All the way up through there. Four or five of them. <gasps> and they had... Was it butternut or brown ale? What's the one at the crossroad? Butternut. 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 That was closed. They closed mm. that Saturday. Mm. I saw. So something must have washed out there. Mm. Yeah. Well, we fared good. Yeah. But it just missed us. It, well, I heard it go through Shelburne, and even the police got back in their cruises and said, it is zero visibility. I am not standing outside. <laughs> mm. so. Yeah, lots of trees in Shelburne not down. Yeah. House this guy. We had one. I only cut half of it up because the homeowner came home and I said, Ah, oh, good, you're here just in time. Your tree is in our road. <laughs> <laughs> they said, That's all right, we'll get it. So, all right, so that's that, good. it's good. Everything's Thanks. going good. Now they just stop raining, we'll start grading roads. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. With no more rain in between. So. A couple days from now, I'll be dust control. <laughs> no, we're it was dust that. control a couple days. Yeah. Uh, when was it? I don't know. Was it? I mean, it just got dusty for a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. so. Okay. That's it. All right. Anybody want to tour the shop? Well, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean, you'll have to have something when yeah. it is all done. Yeah. That'll when be a little done. while. Um, and I think next uh, time CSWD's, next meeting, CSWD's coming. Oh. I think Sarah, I think. Oh. Um, so we'll get an update on where they are. The I well got drilled. Is there, is there one time that's better to come up than another time? Yeah, I mean, in, in the mornings when we're there, if you want to go and look around. Um, the well got drilled, the sleeve got put in. Then tested, the well tested good? No. Yes. No. It didn't. You got a report back? No, we haven't. It hasn't oh, been tested okay. yet. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Yeah. We, don't, we haven't had a report yet. Right. right. Okay. Right. Doesn't the test won't get done until it's hooked to the? Oh, the oh okay, right, right. gotcha. But it has lots of water. Have this yeah, yes. Sixty right. gallons a minute. Yeah, yes, right. Minute, which is a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they put that sleeve in, so that was all done. Good. Yeah. yeah, I didn't understand why why that sleeve wouldn't have worked up in Japrags where we had the well and then we had surface contamination and that. And right, that was surface yeah. contamination. Yeah, so I'm Did like. Did Rob drill that one? I don't know if Rob drilled that. I mean, it was a, quite a while ago, quite, but it time. sure yeah. seems to me like I, I wanted to ask yeah. about, about that. Yeah. So, so it's like an extra it's a, casing, like mm -hmm. a sleeve. And it's that, got a rubber boot on it that when they seal it, it squishes the boot to expand it. And nothing from keeps above water. keeps water yeah. from getting down in. Maybe it's new yeah. technology. Yeah, it might be. He says he's been using it forever. Oh. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I think that uh, Sanchez people are supposed to be there tomorrow. 
Oh. Iron Horse. Oh, okay. I think everybody's supposed to be there tomorrow. Okay, you did mention that. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Great. thanks, Mike. All right, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. See you, Dominic. Bye. He was just here for educational purposes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Learn how to sit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he knows bored? How to, he knows how to do that. <laughs> well. <laughs> thanks. All right, next item on the agenda Dominic, is... Dominic, did you sign in? Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to sign in. Okay. Sign in, sign in, sign in. No, exactly. Next item is town administrator report. Okay. Um, I am, let's see where we are at. First thing, I understand, and I'm not really sure the whole origin of this, to be honest. Um, the north side of the police station, there's a concrete slab. Yeah. Asphalt. Uh, uh, Asphalt. Asphalt. Basketball, Thank basketball you. court. Yes. Yeah. It used to be the parking lot. It was yeah. the parking lot for the old police station. Okay. Um, and now it seems like there's some conversation that it, it's supposed to go away. I um, guess I guess the DRB decision. Yeah. So but if I guess we shouldn't have had Mike leave. <laughs> well, he's he's willing to take care yeah. of it for us. Yeah. Is well, um, in terms of removing it. Mm -hmm. um, I, and there's some this decision. Is it supposed to be gone by, I think, the 30th of June, I want to say? Um, and that's, I think that's what they had yeah. said. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm just letting people know. This okay. is moving forward. There's, there has been some conversation. I never knew it was even there. I went over there and took yeah. a walk today because I have yeah. never I, even seen it. I thought it. about getting a couple basketball Well, that's what games. Digger had suggested, yeah. that we do that. But, um, uh I mean, the police weren't too keen like, on that idea. Yeah, oh, they no, weren't? No, it seems like a great idea. Great place yeah. It seems like a perfect place. Yeah. Um, but, but it, you know, the DRB said it, so. It's supposed to have been removed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, All right. I, just a little bit of an update on that. Yeah. Um, and a couple months ago, or a couple meetings ago, which is probably a couple months ago, Adam Bunting from CVU came and talked about the SRO. Mm -hmm. They had their mm -hmm. meeting... They're in the middle of last month, and it seems as though the school board was very much in agreement that an SRO is an important piece for the community. They are having a meeting. Um, they, they, they're welcoming anyone and all, if you choose, to attend. I believe it's May 15th, and I will send out that date and invitation to you okay. if you would like to be in attendance. Yep. It would be good to have the meeting, yeah. So. Yeah, just so you have a sense. Adam is, I had collected some information. I shared it with him. He's reaching out to his colleagues in other schools as well to get more information. Um, the more information we have, the better off. Must be a two, Tuesday night if it's the 15th. Let me verify the yeah, date. Okay. I, I'm happy to send it out. I, yeah, as I recall, the, I don't think we had any issue with there being a what do you call it? Security SRO, resource. Yeah. No, not school security. Resource, school resource school officer. School resource officer. Yes, school resource officer. But um, I don't think it's fair that the town of Hinesburg pays for it, pays mm -hmm. the full salary, yeah. and the fact no. that he'd work there three quarters of the time and then cheap costs would take him the other quarter. I, that doesn't make sense to me if the cost should be shared by all the towns, yeah. all the and CVU I, I, I towns. Just, I, I don't see any reason why it needs to be a Hinesburg officer because... I mean, it could be a Shelburne officer. It, I mean, it has to be an officer associated with a department, but... Does it have to? Okay. Could be a retired officer. Oh, could be. Oh. Um, actually, my understanding is because typically SROs do carry a gun. They have to carry. They have to carry, and they're, they're not recommending all the information. That, yeah, it's... I know There's places some, that do. do yeah, yeah there, well, we understand that um, Essex High School has a school safety coordinator who is a retired Burlington um, officer, but does not carry a gun. So there's there's definitely different ways to do it, but I guess at that point you are not an SRO. Okay. Um, so there's a meeting happening as yeah. an opportunity for us. I think we yeah. weighed in pretty 
strongly on we, what we thought about the cost. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we're, we weren't yeah, we necessarily budgeted. against it, but it's not budgeted, and so we can and present And even it. if it was budgeted, I just think we've been very right. clear to the citizens of Heinsburg that we're not hiring another right. officer. Right. And I think we have to honor right. that. Right, and it's already a little sketchy to me. It's a little, even though Chief Cow says that we don't, it doesn't really stretch the force, but... It's Heinsberg taxpayers are paying for the police that monitor CVU, and I don't think that that's fair. Okay. So there's an okay. opportunity there. Right. There's yeah, we'll and in. I will send that date to you so you, yeah. you guys have it. Um, and lastly, um, I know that people are aware that we did do um, an asbestos um, inspection on Gilman Road. There has been asbestos found um, at the Gilman Road location, so we now need to go into some further work in terms of the removal of the property has to be done with an asbestos abatement um, person on site, which will require some more coordination and more funds. So we... No surprise. Um, Okay. It was interesting to read about the asbestos at Burlington City Center, yes. mm -hmm. and it, it amounted to a garbage bag. You know, mm -hmm. this will probably amount to a five-pound bag right. of flour or something. I think based I, on the I, report, I back, it's right. in one particular area. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. It's, yeah. It is what it is. It, yeah, exactly. Um, so that's where we're at. Thank you. All right. Any questions? Or? We, we got that report, I believe. You yeah. did. We did. Yeah. You did. It was in your packet. Yeah. And yeah. then we got some other... You just put some stuff in there of correct estimates. Yeah. Correct. Okay. And, okay. And the last item on the agenda is to go into executive oh, okay. session to discuss okay. uh, contract award. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next item is um, select board form. Green up day? Yeah, certainly green up day was, um, I, I consider it a real success. Um, the lunch was not, there weren't as many people at the lunch. Surprisingly, it was such a nice day. Mm -hmm. The lunch was delicious. Um, but yeah, I, I think people had, leftovers here. And I'm, there were some leftovers, so um, did the, we did. How much of the cake did you eat? Now, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I haven't had dinner. <laughs> um, the cake got consumed um, this after, throughout the day. And there were some burgers left, which we put in the freezer. Okay. And there are some buns um, as well. Okay. So um, we've been trying to adjust those numbers so that we don't have too much left over. Um, but I thought it was a good day, and there were a couple of key roads that at the in the morning weren't signed up for, like all of North Road wasn't signed up for, and Shelburne Falls Road, which are, you know, some key ones that... And then, but by... Oh, 10 o'clock in the morning, I came back and looked at the map, and, you know, it looks like all those roads got done. Some of 116 got done. All the roads I see on a daily basis, including a lot of 116, got done, which is really state responsibility, but it's fine if we green it up. It looks better. Mm -hmm. I thought the roads looked remarkably quite well done, and yeah. just about every road, I think, got done, and we had some of the usual volunteers who just show up every year and, mm -hmm. you know, spend three or four hours doing it. And then we had new people who, you know, discovered what it was and some kids who had a great time. And one um, uh, mom came to me and said, um, I just want you to know, Green Up Day is my daughter's favorite day of the year. <laughs> and awesome. then she gets up before six in the morning and says it's Green Up Day, let's go. So wow. uh, Christmas I just see, yes, <laughs> right. That's right, Green Up Day. Yeah. So uh, that was very good. Um, the other item I have is it looks like I will not be here on June twenty first, but I should be able to call in and so I'd be attending remotely. You can well, sure. If you're here, hopefully you're here. Uh, probably. Yeah, that's the Thursday. That is a Thursday. Okay. And that's all I had. I'll know better in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I have a. Oh no, I just I thought we were finished. So you finished what you're saying? Yeah. Um, I just wondered if there was um, uh, a plan for sweeping 
the sidewalks? Um, yes. Um, okay. There is a plan for sweeping the sidewalks. Um, I can elaborate a little bit more if you'd like to know. No. Or Okay, fine. Yes, there is a plan for sweeping the sidewalks. Okay. Anybody else? Did you have something? Yeah, um, May 15th from 6 to 9 is the, Thank you. the meeting. At CDU? Yes. Oh, at CDU? It's uh, Oh, maybe it's not. It might be in Sheldon. Sheldon. It might yeah. be, yeah, it might not be. We'll, we'll, we'll confirm it, it, confirm it but if you want to put well, that part on your calendar. Yeah. yeah, okay. So it would be good There's if at least one of us goes and um, uh, via email, if somebody's planning to go, let the rest of the board know, and we could just, mm -hmm. if there's some questions or things, we could feed that in. Thank you. That would be great. But All right. What about location? I, w I will find out for you and share, or if, if someone thinks of it prior to me thinking of it, please don't it's hesitate. Yeah, we can go Wait on the, their website. And... All, right. All right, next item is... Uh, review of uh, minutes so we have minutes from our last meeting on um, April 16th we'll do that one first I think and then there's the <coughs> town meeting minutes oh, which yeah. we already reviewed I think we had a copy of them yeah yeah um, because they weren't approved no they weren't approved yet but I think there might have been a tweak that we had so is there a motion I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 16th oh I with the changes yeah I'll second okay. it for you okay um, I have some uh, changes under um, uh, Mike Bissonette's report. Uh, he, I think, was referring to the ECOS plan, E-C-O-S, and it's, that's how it's always referred to, but if you wanted to know what the acronym was, it, it, it is, is Environmental Community Opportunity Sustainability Plan. But I think it's probably um, better to just write ECOS. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what it's referred to. Nobody ever calls it anything else. So it's not the unified planning work program that he was talking about. You know, that was the next sentence is the environmental community opportunity plan. Oh, we'll have I a see. second. It's just the ECOS plan. Okay. We'll we'll have a second public so hearing. You got me so into not using those acronyms, Anne. <laughs> no, I said that it's fine to use the acronym. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to first use the whole thing though. Yeah. And then use it. There wasn't an opportunity to do both. Oh, right. I see what you're saying. And so it would probably be good under the unified oh, so planning you're, work you're, program you're, to then write UPWP okay. since that's how everybody yeah. refers to it. And um, then uh the other thing was um i had asked about the rec path or and i guess i had misunderstood that it was going out to bid and so that's what i think got said at the um meeting about the from commerce street to nrg which section was that in under town administrator's report yeah, I was tr truthfully, I wasn't really sure where you were coming up with that information. Right. Well, I, I like, had okay. asked Renee, okay. and she told me, I, I under, maybe she didn't tell me, I understood that it was going out to bid. And um, so we might want we to take, that out. take it out. Okay. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, what it was, in fact, was going to the DR DRB. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we could say that. So, yeah, yeah. Say that. the rec path north was being presented to the... DRB. DRB. Yeah. And the sentence right before that is a little confusing. I think it's just some ings are left out. Asbestos testing will be done and working to find some options for other residents for the occupant. So uh, it just um, needs no. a little English work. A little other, some other working options. Yeah. to <laughs> find other options. Uh, yeah. Asbestos yeah. done will be done and who is working? Yeah. We, we need a subject for oh, that. The, the town. The town okay. is working, well, continues to work on finding, finding options. So that needs to be put in there. Yeah. Thank you. All right, any others? I didn't have any. So maybe we'll, if we're all set with that, all those in favor of approving the minutes as amended, say aye. 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 So I'll uh, not opposed. Next is the town meeting minutes. 
And uh, I looked at these, I, they seem to be correct. I did not, I admit, I did not look at the detail of the actual numbers to make sure there weren't any trans, <laughs> transposed. transposed. But that never happens. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so is there a motion to approve these? Sure, I can make that motion for you. As, am as amended? Yeah, because yeah, we and seconded. fixed that. What you're, what you're referring to, didn't we? Uh, well, uh, yeah. yeah, that would yeah. Be but, oh, Actually, that was for last year. year. Yeah, so but it was, it's in the this minutes year. here yeah. the saying we did that. Yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah. Yeah. Any? Did everyone get a chance to look it over? I didn't find any errors. Yeah. I okay. think we did read them over. Before. Yeah, I think yeah. we did already, so. Yeah. Are you okay, Andrea? Yep. Yeah. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 And none opposed, so that's passed. Oh, Next. oh, wait, I did have something now that you've done it. You you mentioned John Alexander in there. I'm sorry, I didn't read my minutes. Didn't, didn't he get an award? Isn't that what you said at the town meeting? And it just mentioned his name. Yeah. Didn't it's, say anything about the award. No, but it didn't. I don't know that it needs to. It just says that they were, we recognized, mentioned several areas of interest, including the hiring of Renee, um, Joy Grossman, John, John, John Alexander from the wastewater. It doesn't say why. Yeah. And okay. then acknowledging yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is that okay? All right. Next item is uh, warrants. Make, make a motion to approve the warrants. I'll second it. Along with the Carmel this year, this week. Get Both either. payroll and, and AP. Yeah. Um, so all those in favor? Say aye. 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 None opposed. That motion passed. And now, um, so there's, we've gotten some bids to do work on the asbestos removal. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, I think we can discuss those bids and... Um, the thought is to go into executive session, um, so we could make a motion that says premature public discussion would cause the municipality to potentially uh, put it, put us at a disadvantage. Um, so if there's, I would make that motion. Okay. I'll second it for you. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And then um, I'll make a motion to go into executive session, including um, Joy. Um, That's all right. And under the provisions under of the Title provision. One, Section Three Thirteen A One A of Vermont State Statutes. Second. Okay. Um, and again, the purpose is to review bids on the work associated with. Gilman Road um, site cleanup and asbestos removal. Um, so all those in favor say aye. 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 So the motion's passed. So Ken, we'll um, stop. You know, we can stop. And if there's any motions made, we will come out of executive session. We'll um, if there's any decisions to be made, and we will put them into. Joy will re record those, and they'll go into the minutes of our uh, meeting. Okay? Good night. Thank you.